Following is a conversation between Great Skeleton Man. I've talked to him quite a few times because honestly, he's great to talk to. He's a great guy. He knows a lot about a lot. And he's one of the few friends I have who I can actively disagree with. And we're great at the end of the day. I don't have to avoid topics with him. So I hope you enjoy the conversation. Uh, here it is. Good. How we long has it. it been since we talked? Oh, it's been a couple months at least. I think it's been oh, maybe three months. Three months, it's huh? A, it's really been a while since you and I last talked. Yeah, yeah. it's been a while. Lots has happened, huh? Yeah, a, a lot has happened. A lot has happened. Yeah. I, uh, a little bit too much for one lifetime, if I'm honest with you. For you, yeah? Yeah, that's a lot's been going on, yeah. All right, well, why don't we start with that? What's happened sure, with sure. you since uh, since we've been... Well, I mean, in my personal life, just mostly the same stuff as we've talked about before, you know, I mean, I'm just busy, I'm working, I'm doing all this kind of stuff. But I think a lot's been happening in the world since you and I last talked. Ah, fair think, enough. Yeah. I think that since you and I last talked, uh, I don't even think, was Ukraine even a topic back then? I don't think so. I don't oh. think we talked about that at all. No, you're right. Yeah, I don't think so. We didn't. No, no. we didn't. So hmm. we've got a lot going on, uh, both domestic and foreign since yeah. then. Yeah. I think the subject we last left off on was just like the philosophy of people. I right? remember like, on, yeah. online. Yeah, yeah, I remember us talking about that. I remember it was. I actually, I was like, oh yeah, we got to talk about this more. I had to go. I had to go. I had to go teach that day or something. But yeah, no, I, I had yeah. a, I had a great time talking about that stuff with you. I can't remember what it was, but I remember <laughs> I, I enjoyed it a lot. Right. Yeah. yeah, I did too. I was actually so I was I had a guest on. Um, last Saturday, I don't know if you know Hylian Pickles. Um, it's like in the Jared crowd. He's a cool guy, Ty. He does artwork. I saw him in his chat yesterday. Um, That's where I saw yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I had him on. Um, he's like really knowledgeable about the manga industry, and I'm not. So like mm -hmm. he had he like had a lot to tell me about that. I thought it was super interesting. And during that conversation, I actually talked about you because I was talking about why I like talking to you and mm -hmm. why I couldn't. I, I was talking about I was telling them that I was going to talk to you today, and I was yeah. like, I'm really excited. Because uh, one of the things that I really enjoy talking about you is like, it, you know, I, I don't know if you know this, if you if you recognize this, but I experience a lot when I have when I talk with people, there's a lot of pedantry. Mm -hmm. People really like waste time on word choice rather than on what you mean. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they're not listening to what you mean. They're they're trying to catch you on something and like derail your point to to go like, well, you you said this word, and like you knew what I meant. Yes, you knew what I yeah. meant. The yeah. spirit of what I'm saying. Yeah. I always feel like when I talk to you, there's, you're very charitable and we don't waste a whole lot of time on that stuff. We can get to like the point a lot faster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the same for you. It's, uh, I've noticed this has happened a lot, uh, recently. Well, maybe, maybe more so recently than not, but there's like a, like a saying, well, you have to figure out what your intentions are. So if I'm talking to you, yeah. what are my intentions in talking to you? It's like, okay, well, you have a certain perspective. You have certain, you have a certain life you've lived and things you've experienced, and you have a unique knowledge base that is unique to you. No one else has it, as long as right. you have developed yourself in the direction of yourself and not just whatever. Yeah, not just duplicating what you've seen without any real knowledge of what that is. Mm -hmm. So then it's Make it's my job come true. or my intention, Do it. I would say, sorry, I just got to resub. It's my intention no, right now to um, to figure that out. Like that's thank what, you for resubbing to Faraz Khan, guys. Thank you. <laughs> like other, otherwise, it's like, why else would I be here? You know, I want to figure out what yeah. you know and and what's going on and your perspective and where the value is in it. So yeah. uh, I I've said this to a few people, but it's it's all I guess Jordan Peterson says this too. He 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 has one of his rules where it's like talk to whoever you're talking to, talk to them as if they know something you don't. Mm -hmm. And and the the way I've always thought about it is I need to figure out what makes you right. Like what you're saying, mm -hmm. I need to figure out how it's right. And then from there, then I'll be able to see what you see. And then we can, the ideas can clash. But if I'm figuring out how it's wrong, well, the problem with that is you can make everything wrong. You can make anything sure. wrong. Like absolutely everything. Everything can be wrong. The, the yeah. yeah, truth, there's, there's, very little that is fundamentally true. There's probably nothing that's fundamentally true that we know of. So it's like, you can make everything wrong, but why would you want to? Right. Well, I mean, if you want to get super philosophical, which I do easily, it's, it's, 
it's this idea that like everything is true in your world. The reality that you experience is true or untrue based on your perspective. Almost all of reality is subjective, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, even when we say like, well, the sky is blue, I'm like, not to a colorblind person, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> not, to, not to an animal that sees spectrums we don't see, yeah. you know, yeah. grass isn't green to someone who's blue, green, colorblind, right. you know? Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like everything is somehow through a lens of subjectivity. If you don't feel pain, then there's nothing in the world hurts you. Uh -huh. You know, it may cause damage, but that's not pain. Right. Yeah. So then the question, I guess, come from, from there comes, okay, well, then why, why uh, base anything in objectivity at all? Right. If if things are so subjective, why base anything in ob objectivity at all? And I, I would like to hear what you think about that. I think it, it it's a matter of what problems you're trying to solve, right? So, like, mm -hmm. when I've had this conversation before, right? So I was talking about, like, um, uh, for example, the subject of, like, being born, mm -hmm. right? So, like, some people, it, it's going to be based heavily on your spiritual beliefs, what, how you came to, to be, right? Um, and some people would believe that, you know, like their belief system may say that you are, you know, you choose to have a lifetime, right? Some people would say that in their belief system. So then they may say that, you know, that was... Hold purely, on, hold on no, there. Sorry, what, what, what do you mean by that? You choose to have a lifetime. Uh, certain spiritual beliefs yeah. believe that you... And I'm, I'm being purposefully vague because I'm not trying to, like, get caught up on individual, like, belief systems. Right. But, like, some beliefs, like, if you're Christian, you think that, you know, God sends you here to have a lifetime. If you're atheist, you don't believe that... Well, if you're food for the worms atheist, you don't believe you have a soul. Uh -huh. And then some spiritual beliefs, like certain... Um, uh, I, I don't know what the correct denomination is. Uh, like certain like Hindu beliefs believes that the higher self like the Eastern beliefs to be born. Yeah, yeah certain Eastern yeah. beliefs believe that you choose to have a lifetime. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know? I, th I think I've heard about those. Like the uh, what what I heard from Alan Watts is that you have to conceptualize what it would be like doing the same thing over and over and over again and never being surprised. And then right. it's like, okay, well what would be surprising, new, uh, wonderful, beautiful again. It's like, oh, you lose all your memories of everything and you live another life Start over again. again. Yeah, and that, yeah. there's a joy in that. I think that's what he was saying. Anyway, go continue with what no, you're saying. No, no, but no, it's fine. But like some beliefs have like a uh, belief that like you have karma to work through and that each lifetime mm -hmm. is you working through those karmas. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a different one. But mm -hmm. I was talking about someone who had that belief that, you know, you choose to be born, right? Mm -hmm. You choose to have that lifetime. But in the context of them rebutting me saying, well, my parents chose to have me. I didn't choose that. And then they said, well, no, but this. I said, well, the problem with that is, is that that's a faith-based spiritual belief which were we having a philosophical spiritual belief, then we would have to talk our individual spiritual beliefs. I'm talking about purely the pragmatic reality mm -hmm. of whether someone chooses to have a child and then I am born, right? Mm -hmm. So why am I bringing that example up? The reason I'm bringing that example up is to say that that very example is an example of two different ways of approaching the same topic, but you're trying to come to different conclusions and those two conclusions don't intersect mm -hmm. in and of themselves, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's like, it, it's it's one of those, like, ideas that when you are dealing with a specific subject, um, you need to address that subject through a, a specific lens. Yes. Yeah. Right? And so when it comes to objectivity, you have to work in the world of objectives, right? Like, what is your goal? Um philosophically everything might not might be subjective but in reality right gravity exists so when we in design a plane we have to work around the the laws of gravity the laws of aerodynamics those things are real yes in that context but if you want to get metaphysical those things only exist in the metaphysical conversation around what is matter what is reality you know solid matter is made of energy what is energy you know, like then you're getting into like quantum physics and now you're looking at it through a different lens because one day we may, may not have to follow those rules. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think that's, 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 that's wonderful. Um, I think when it comes down to it, it's, it's so that we can get things done. Like right. we, need, we need some communication system that we agree on in order to get things done, build a rocket or go to school teach some kids some stuff, advance yeah. something, or even communicate, me and you. Like, me and you have to communicate, or we don't have to, but we communicate. In order to do it efficiently, efficiently we need a collective framework. 
Like you and I have to agree on the meaning of the words I'm saying in order for, mm. you know, and so you can say, well, it, I think there was a few arguments that everything is subject, uh, like everything is subjective. So the sun is subjective. What I call the sun, you call this, whatever. And it's like, well, Her no. Definitions are always subjective, but like you have to have a way of communicating something that is true, that the sun does exist. It produces light and heat mm -hmm. on a cycle. Those things just are real, mm -hmm. right? Like you and I have no ability to change those things, only our perception of those things. So if we want to argue that that's not real, then you're what you're really arguing is just your explanation for what is real, not the fact that the sun exists. The pedantics, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pedantics. We're back back yeah. to the pedant pedant pedantics, yeah. Um, and I think I think what's happening in large part right now with all the conflict that's going on is that people know that their frameworks, so their systems of values, beliefs, perceptions don't line up. And instead of addressing the, fa the frameworks and going back and forth, they're instead going a level up and just clashing here on the pedantics over and over and over again. It's, that's not going to solve anything. You have to go down to the frameworks. I um, agree 100% with that statement. Yeah, that's usually what I'm trying to explain to other people, too, is this this whole, like, we're arguing up here and the problem's down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you can talk about that with almost any subject that is, like, a heated subject right now. Almost, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there's some where people are arguing the fundamentals. But in most cases, especially cultural disagreements often come down to like an underlying issue where the conflict is really happening. Yeah, like an, an ethic. An ethic and it's... Or a personal value or a personal belief. Yeah, some something there. But they never get down to... Well, sometimes they get down to it, but it's never let's resolve the problem at the source and stop conflict. It's more so just, I just, it seems like people just want conflict. They just want it. They want it. They want it. They want it. And I can understand why. Um, yeah. I, and I think it's because everything else that's going on in your life. Well, I think, I think people have to learn how to handle the stress, the suffering, the misery, the, all the not great parts of life. And I think it's a process sure, yeah. in terms of, well, what do I do with this? And how do I make sure it doesn't eat me from inside out? And you learn that through life. But I think what's happened with social media especially is now people just funnel all of that towards each other. Like they just, mm. I think that that, is the, that has become the default coping mechanism for people to take whatever whatever is stressing them out in their lives and funnel it into the pedantics surrounding their framework at whoever else. I think that that might actually be a big reason that things are so vitriolic nowadays. I think, I think I agree with you to, to a fair extent. I mm -hmm. also think a big part of it is it's a mixture of, of all it, it's like, um, you've got all these little things that are, harmful to the whole conversation. What you've got is platforms where you communicate in very small snippets, a public forum where anyone can comment on on such a thing, regardless mm -hmm. of their their knowledge base or ability to represent their knowledge of something. Um, and and then and and you've got an on anonymity, right? Mm -hmm. Or even if there's not anonymity, like I've always said to people, when one of the things I hate is I hate having a conflict via text. If someone I wants to hate like, it. yeah, yeah. Well, and the reason I hate it is because what happens, it, it it starts bad. the The immediate thing is someone has a complaint. They send you a paragraph or ten paragraphs. Out of that paragraph, five different or ten paragraphs, five things are addressed. Mm -hmm. Each of those things cannot be addressed as a whole. They must be addressed individually. Now you spend forever trying to address each one, but you're not able to explain yourself any more that you have to you have to guess their reactions to it you have to try to be as clear there's no body language no tone and no expression mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. just words and then once that's all said and done you send it and then they take a year to read it have a reaction to your now probably six points and do it again and it does this back and forth that ends up causing more issues than it resolves if mm -hmm. you had just spoken mm -hmm. i've had hour long back and forths over text that can be solved by one five minute conversation. Cause as it turns out, everyone was just confused. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's almost like a, 
like a mini game of telephone on every point. And then there's also yeah. the, the time delay in between where it's like, okay, they're writing, they're writing. What was I thinking? Oh, I, I, you know, I can't remember this point or whatever. And it comes down to efficiency. I've never understood it. Like if I have a conflict, it's like, okay, let's figure this out. Let's resolve it. Not, I feel bad and I'm scared of talking to you because, you know, for whatever reason, or let's say I just don't want to. So instead I'm going to do what feels a little bit better and write out a big block of text but it's it's right. so inefficient. So it's 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 like a it's like what are the intentions here? Are the intentions to solve this, or are the intentions to, you know, just float along in 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 whatever emotion you currently have? Which brings me to another thing, and this is well, I want to know what you think about this. Sure. So the statement I would make is that conversations and disagreements should be reserved to those who want to get things done, want to get them solved, want to figure them out. Someone says something to me uh, a while ago. His name is Rod. He's, he's a really cool guy. I was talking to him a lot. Um, and we came, we were just talking about some stuff, and we came up to a point where a lot of the topics that are coming up nowadays or a lot of disagreements people have or a lot just even disagreements people don't have that are not just pedantics, mm -hmm. in order for anyone to get anywhere the people involved have to do the work to be able to have those disagreements or able to hold those points. Because a lot of people will have points that are not based in anything. It's just based off on a feeling or something like that. Ah, uh, yes. Feelings. Um, it, it, feelings are interesting. And I, it, it's a very interesting topic to talk about the way people are motivated by feelings mm -hmm. because feelings are real. And I hate the word, but feelings are valid. Mm -hmm. I hate the term valid because of how often it's used now. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. used as a value statement to say that like it, it's meaningful. Valid isn't the same thing as like has substance. You know, mm -hmm. I can have a bad feeling. That doesn't mean that it's like that that bad feeling is a statement of reality or fact right. right but people treat their feelings as a a reason you know as an important like i feel this way and that makes it a, a thing that should be taken seriously yeah that that but makes like, it that elevates it but like you can be in a dark room that has that is secured all openings are shut you have plenty of air, it's the perfect temperature, but because it's dark, you're freaking out. But in reality, you are perfect. You are the safest person on earth. Mm -hmm. If you were in a perfectly regulated, perfectly safe, perfectly secure room that was impervious to all damage, but afraid of the dark, you would be experiencing fear for your life while having no danger present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So people treat feelings as matters of, I, I don't wanna say fact, but matters of purpose. And they can be. People experience feelings, and those have a big effect on you and your health mm -hmm. and, and your ability to be rational. But they are not in and of themselves an answer, but people think that they are. And then they make decisions based on that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they, they, they say, I feel this way about this subject. I feel this is wrong. I feel this is right. Um, I feel that I deserve this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone who's ever stolen felt that it was a good idea you know they felt right. they felt like that was that they deserved to do that right you know yeah 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 no i've done that before but when i was a kid uh <laughs> when i was a kid we still had cds then so we, st we didn't have sure. uh you couldn't pirate music not well as easily not yet there was a period where i was a kid where it was like napster came out uh limewire sure. came out kazaa i don't know if you remember kazaa same yep yeah so i was i was i stole I stole fucking Il Devo CDs. There's like, there's, you, I don't know why. I was just like, there were, there's, it's an interesting thing because it was like, at first it started with, okay, I will buy this CD and I will steal this CD um, because I, I got a kick out of stealing it. Um, and I didn't really have any money at the time. I didn't really need the CD or anything, but I was like, you know, let's, let's explore this. And it's probably not the, the best childhood thing to do, but I'm, um, Oh, wow. Kids do things that, 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 well, you know what? I think that, that, that that's just like, I, I hate to say it, but literally kids do things that, 
you know, you go, yeah, you don't do that. But that's the lesson, right? Yeah, you got to. That's being a kid. Kids fuck up. That's part of learning to not be a fuck up later on. Yeah, that's the developmental thing. And uh, that's also why making sure kids never are in any dangerous situations at all, um, dangerous situations that they can be relatively safe in, let's say, um, or letting them Staying in make... the park and letting them run around. They may fall down. Exactly. They may fall down. Though these situations, I think, are, are harming harming kids a lot more than people think. Um, but anyway, I would, I would steal these CDs, and e- even if I didn't listen to them or anything, I would get a, I get a, I get a rush or a kick from it. Sure. You know, and it was learning about that and experiencing that that helped it helped me figure out. Well, I know this is wrong, and I know this is wrong because. I wouldn't want someone to do this to me. But at the same time, you know, Aladdin steals apples and there's, yeah, there's, there's all these. But he's still the hero. He's still the hero and there's some mischief in it and stuff. So what is the difference between stealing an apple for necessity or because you got to eat or because you want to help someone and stealing a CD because it gets you a kick, you know, because it it makes you feel good. And it's like that, that was something that people, like if you ask someone, they probably won't be able to tell you, but. I think that's pretty. There's a pretty distinct difference between stealing an apple because it's fun and stealing an apple because you're mm-hmm. going to starve to death if mm-hmm. you don't. I think mm-hmm. that's, there's a distinct right, issue but there. intuitively <laughs> now it's yeah. like now now when I like you know everybody everybody has certain things that govern them, and so for me it's like I like I like do I like getting around things. Like there's something within me that's just like oh like there okay I can just go over here instead and do this. But now mm-hmm. since I experienced that it's like okay intuitively i can say oh no that's wrong like that is wrong and this one that one's okay like that's uh instead of it just being like a checklist that you check off is this what it's supposed to be yes is it not what it's supposed to be no it's like okay well what if i am in a hostage situation and someone's gonna shoot me but then they're gonna shoot this person and if i can steal this money or do this like when there's complex variables involved in complex systems um then that intuitiveness i think serves serves me better whereas without that cd case i I don't think i would have learned things like that that makes sense right yeah 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 i I don't know where i was going with that well, I just want to tell you that now that you have told me that, um, how old are you now? Uh, 49 officially, uh, but 49 I, actually officially. Uh, I'm 31. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't know you were a year younger than me. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So this was what, uh, like, uh, uh, like what, uh, what, 20 years ago that you did this? Probably, yeah. Oh, wow. Jesus yeah. Okay, Christ. well, Two I'm going to have to go on Twitter and talk about why <laughs> you're Hitler now. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I just want you to know that you cannot change as a person, yep. and you learn no lessons. No, I And am. who you are then is exactly who you are now. I no? sealed my my entire online career. You know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to... My last blog post was a 24-hour, 24 24-minute 24 read. I'm going to have to make an hour read to respond to your Twitter post and also why your mustache is too good for your face. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't believe this is on all of this. I look in the mirror and I just go. Ah. It's a good mustache. Like I, 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 I didn't, I didn't tell you when it when it popped up. It was the first thing I noticed. I was like, oh wow. You've Most been... people do. You know what's funny about it is it's not some legendary tale of why I, I started styling my mustache this way. Hmm. Um, I just I already had facial hair and I was uh, DMing some D and D for a group of friends yeah. and one of the people there was sort of like an irregular. He was there sometimes. He'd started coming around more and he started curling his mustache. He was like a hipster, you know, <laughs> but he didn't have like a lot of facial hair, so it's like a tiny curl. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, you're curling. He's like, yeah, I just got this mustache wax. He's like, here, try it. So I curled my mustache with the wax. And everyone thought it was really funny because I was the DM, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to kill them. And everyone was like, oh, that's that looks really good. So I just kept it that way. And then, um, you know, I was going to college at the time. Uh, it's very interesting. I didn't realize how many girls at college were interested in me but were too intimidated to speak with me. But now that they had an in and that was my facial hair, yeah. I just started getting tons of attention. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is really good. I should keep this. You should keep it, yeah. And I just never got rid of it. That's yeah. great. So what do you do? Do you... um? Do you like use a wax or something? Like I've I not anymore. No, I've you, got the hair so trained. Really? Uh, you just mm-hmm. you just do that do, and it does it. 
when I when I shower, I wash my my facial hair as well. Which, mm. by the way, they'll tell you not to do that, but that's the opposite of what I do. I I I wash it, and then when I get out, I curl it on my fingers, and I kind of just sit there for about a minute, mm -hmm. and then I stop. And then they usually hold their shape because the hairs are already well trained. Completely natural. That's insane. Look at that. Yeah, wow. I mean, it'll it'll fuck up if I like sleep on it, but then I just wet it and curl it and wait yeah. for it to dry, and then yeah. it's done. Oh, that's great. It that way. Look at that. Yep. Cool. Yeah. I don't oh, know if cool. I could do that. I does it ever annoy you or anything? Because like for me, if I get food here or here, it pisses oh, yeah. me off. Oh, I hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate when I get food in my in my beard or my. But mustache. that doesn't feel like that at all, even though it's stiff. No, I don't feel anything. No, actually, it's mostly if I don't shave under here, I get itchy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I always shave my neck and stuff under here because it gets itchy if it gets long. But like here, here, I don't feel anything. How much time you spend on your facial hair? not not that like much 30 seconds in the shower i go shink yeah shink oh no way huh and i and, and i and I, I i usually trim some like when i'm dry i'll like trim a couple hairs yeah there, just the hairs, stragglers but... the mad yeah. scientist stragglers ah, that's yeah, cool it's really easy yeah 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 it's, it's pretty easy so i i i wanted to ask you about D D actually because you Absolutely. brought it up feel free um I think there's a certain have you so you you were a dungeon master you just said you were a dungeon master. Yeah, I mean I've played I've played and then I DM but you I generally DM. prefer to DM to play. Yeah, you know? so I know there's people who prefer to play and I know there's people who prefer to DM and so you're the the latter and I was going to yeah. ask why? Why do you prefer to DM? Well, it's a mixture of things. Um one of the things is just years of experiencing DMs that frustrated me. Mm -hmm. um just they weren't very good at it they weren't in it for the right reasons I, I ran into a lot of people who it was more of a power trip or more about making you kind of just be an actor in their pre-written script which isn't very fun mm -hmm. um and then it's also that uh i get bored of being just one person oh um, i'm and so when i'm the dm i get to play a lot of characters and i i put a lot of effort into every character i play like even just the generic guard you run into has like a personality with like you know, and I, I I know his voice and I want to like act it out. You know what I mean? So I really enjoy that yeah. and being able to be a variety of characters and have different personalities like that is, is very fun. That's interesting because I remember when we were talking last time, my memory, memory works like I, don't, I have a very horrible chronological memory. If you asked me what I ate yesterday, I couldn't tell you. But I, I think I have a very good associative memory, if that's a thing. But I remember you talking about the games you liked to play and what you enjoyed about them was being immersed in the role. Yes. And I was like, oh, I don't like that at all. Um, <laughs> or, you know, I said something to the to the effect of, yeah, it's not a big deal for me. So that makes sense because you're like, oh, yeah, I yeah. like to do, I like to put myself in this situation, this situation, this situation, this situation. So when you do that, what is it that you are thinking? Shaking. Is it like, oh, this is so fun? Or, oh, I get to explore this person's thought i get to explore his trajectory a little bit of column a a little bit of column b a little bit of both and you it, know i think i've been doing it for a long time so really now it's just the experience of whatever it is in the moment if it's a character that conflicts with like one of the things that i really enjoy hmm. is when a player has an expectation of the way something should work mm -hmm. and they have to realize that that's not how it works so they will say um you know, they, they, they'll come up and they will make an argument. Mm -hmm. And then that person goes, well, you can suck my fat nuts. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then and then they're like, well, but this makes sense. And I'm like, to you? Yeah. You know, yeah. like, and they have to like come to terms with like, oh, just like making an argument and being a charismatic person. What, who is this character? Yeah. Why don't they like me? What is quintessential to them that makes this harder? I've, I'm the bard. I should be able to charm everyone. Why is this guy telling me that if I bother him again, he'll stab me? Yeah. You know, now you have to like think around it. And that's not to say that I purposefully want all characters to be contradictory. I don't, but yeah. it's, it's, it's nice to have those moments where you can see the other person has to go, oh, I have to think, right? I figured this you out. Have to, you have to like embed yourself into that personality that's not, you know, just trying to acquiesce to what the players want and where they're trying yeah. to go. You have to be willing to be a hurdle that stops them, you know, or in the inverse, when someone has a clever idea of the right person to ask or the right thing to do, being the facilitator to say, oh, yeah, that's a, yeah, this person's actually very friendly. You ask the right person. He's definitely here to help you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I like that kind of the diversity of moment. 
you know, it's yeah. very interesting. No, that's, that's super. That sounds really engaging. That sounds fun. It is. Yeah. That sounds yeah. great. I, so when I, when I hear you say that me, I'm, if I had, well, obviously I have deficiencies, but as everybody knows by Twitter, but <laughs> if, if I, <laughs> one of the things where it's like, I, I would consider myself maybe not weak, but on one side of the spectrum is the, okay, this is, this makes sense to me. This is how it's supposed to go. Um, mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm more into things that are like, okay, are archetypal or they, yeah, this is a universal thing. This is how it goes. This is what's going on. I remember, I remember playing risk way back a long time ago with some friends and this is, this is where I think I was overreaching for sure. And I remember I had one of my friends, Jeff. Jeff, I was about to destroy him. Just wipe him out. My army was so yeah, big yeah, yeah. and he was about to die. And I said, well, listen, here's what you can do. I can kill you now or in an undisclosed number of terms, I will, I will dictate your turn. So whenever I feel like it, I get this once, I get to decide what you do, however, however it is, because I wanted to uh, attack another person with his army, right? Sure. And he said, "No, absolutely not. Um, if you want, you can give me a, a pre-planned out attack, but you can't do that." And I was like, "No, like I'm about to kill you. It's like you choose this or you die." And for him, it's it's like he was just stubborn, so he was like, "No, I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna die." And I was like, okay, like, hey, if you want to die, you want to die. die. But then mm -hmm. I lost, I lost the game overall. So sure. because I was stuck in this way of like, okay, well, I'm not going to work with you here. I have the control. I have the power. Therefore, that you should submit. And it's like, no, within the rules of the game, yeah, maybe. But outside of the game, you're still a person. And you're, you know, there's other factors and stuff like that. I think if I had worked with him a little bit more, I could have potentially won the game. But I can get, I can I get pretty some... stubborn. I had someone who was stubborn. Um, I used to play, I don't do it anymore because it's a money sink, but I used to play Magic the Gathering. Oh. And, you know, you can have games with multiple, it doesn't have to be 1v1. It can be three, you know, 1v1v1 or whatever, right? And so we were doing uh, three player, and my one friend has a deck that basically has a card that whenever you play a card, you take one damage. Whenever you play a creature, you take one damage. And this is the antithesis of my deck. So I said, dude, you keep playing this. And every time I have to fight you and, 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 and because if I don't fight you, you will bleed me to death because my deck is an aggro deck. I have to play creatures. Mm -hmm. And so you keep doing that. And so what happens is, is that I have to attack you because I will bleed to death if not. And my, our other friend here just sits here and does nothing until we've worn each other down. You inevitably die because my deck can just defeat you head on and then he wins because he has taken he's just prepared he's had just plenty and of this would just happen up. over and over and over and over yeah again. yeah and the person he just wouldn't he said well then just don't just don't he's like don't destroy that card and then so every time if i destroyed the card he would come straight at me yeah he would not he wouldn't let me just destroy it he would come straight at me yeah. and he would only attack me out of like spite but it, it always meant he lost first and i lost second Every really time. every he single time stop doing it and, and then like, he just didn't understand. stop like he just, yeah, he just it never was resolved never resolved sometimes sometimes i would still end up winning yeah right against nice. the third guy yeah good but like it was one of those things where it was like it doesn't have to be this way we could be taking him out first and uh -huh. then fight each other but you always do this so you always die first so why do you think he was doing that he doesn't help you yeah yeah, yeah he I, doesn't help. i don't know stubbornness stubbornness and uh, friendship outside of that was all good. Like everything was. Oh yeah, we've been friends. We've been friends. Forever. He just doesn't want to let go of that card, huh? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I'll yeah, I wonder it. what that is. I've noticed that when people play games, like I played a lot of StarCraft way back in the day. There are some people that are just locked into a mode of this is what I'm going to do, and even right. even if it doesn't work, I'm still going to do it. That's what a lot of uh, like when you're high ranking. That's what a lot of people would do to get to like low high ranks, they would cheese. And they would say, this is what I'm going to do. If it doesn't work, I'm just going to, you know, say GG and X the game or not say GG or whatever. Um, and they would just get stuck in that mode. And I was thinking about that. And I think I've been stuck in that mode too, because it was, it was like, okay, this game, I'm going to 
Oh, what was it? Yeah, this game, I'm going to uh, three gate expand into attack, and I'm going to do that over and over and over and over again. And part of it, it was healthy. It was like, okay, you're practicing a strategy, you're doing, you're getting better at all of the things involved. And from there, you know, you're building up your skills and you can move on to something else. But then I think there's a, there's a, there's a eventuality where it becomes unhealthy if you don't keep it in check, where it just becomes almost dogmatic. It's like, no, this is what I do. Like, this is what I, yeah. yeah. And I think that's, that's what happens. The more tired I got and the more frustrated I got when playing StarCraft, because I was really going at it. I would play for eight hours a day when I was 17, 18, something like that. Mm. Um, the more frustrated and the more tired, the more dogmatic I would get. The more I would be like, no, I, I lost a game. Okay, I got to do it again. Okay, this time, three gate ex- expand into this, into this attack at this point. And it would just be, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense at all. It'd be like, well, I'm, I'm walking my army to, to my death. And it's like, no, nope, that's what I'm going to do. You know, I, mm-hmm. I wonder what thought pattern that is. I wonder where that comes from. Because I've seen, it's not only just in me, I've seen it in other people as well. You know, I think it's um, I, I when I think about it, because I know what you're talking about, because I see that in like League of Legends, right? Mm-hmm. Like the more frustrated people get, the more they won't adapt their strategy. And then if like you say, well, you just need to do this instead, they get like angry at you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like they do something, they lose their lane, um, not even lose their lane. They're just like now in an unopportune position instead of just like pull back, play safe, ask for help. You know, just just farm under tower. They're like, well, now I'm super behind. It's like, okay, but would you rather be useless? Mm-hmm. In yeah. That game? Would, <laughs> yeah. You, would you rather feed your opponent six more kills and have them dominate the whole map, or would you rather just know that they're they're ahead? They've got two, three kills, and they're ahead of you, and they're gonna out farm you. But you can farm under tower, and when laning phase is over, you guys can you know, you come join your team and you're still a function member of your team bot lane or mid lane or jungle are ahead and they're going to counteract your laner being ahead and strategy will win right mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. could do that they don't do that they're angry so instead they keep trying they're like i got to get in there i got to kill this guy i got to kill this guy yeah. and 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 then and then they throw and then like they actually throw the game you know, yeah, yeah, because like they have to do it. They're like they're diving in at every opportunity, but the other guy is two levels ahead of them, a thousand gold ahead of them with a full item, and and they lose even when their opponents at half health. They their opponent still defeats them, but they they just keep doing it because like for one whatever reason they can't accept that they need to change their strategy now and redo their mental to just be okay with the result. I think it's two things. I, I think this happens in trading too. Interestingly enough, like day trading, uh, stock trading. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, I think it's ego. So the more frustrated oh, yeah. you get, the more susceptible you are to your ego. No, I didn't make a mistake. No, I just got to keep doing this. No, I wasn't wrong, even though yep. that doesn't even necessarily apply to the situation. And two, I think it's the the tendency for people to gamble and double down on things. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so I think those two things combined create these situations where it's like, they're just going to keep going and you're not going to snap them out of it. Because, well, if you talk to them, you're going to make their ego worse. You're you're going to inflame their ego. And they're convinced, oh, yeah, like if I just, no, I just need one more good trade. Or, no, I just need one good streak of kills. Or, no, I just need this one thing to work. And I'm back to where I was. And everything's fine. And I didn't make any mistakes. I think think, think that's what it is. Yeah. No, that's actually a big one. I always like when I watch someone do something that they shouldn't do. Like, just in the league context. You know, Mm. when I watch someone do something that was just a bad move. And then they're, like, pinging everyone else saying, you did wrong. Why didn't you do this? And it's like, why did you do what you did? Mm. Do you not see the mistake that you made? Mm. That's a big thing that I've actually had to learn to try to like improve my own skill is like completely recognizing when I was wrong and not like blame anyone else who was present. Right. So it's like, if I make a call, if I make a decision, I tell the team, we got to push this. And then it's like, ah, maybe we should have pulled back. I Mm -hmm. think I threw it there, Mm -hmm. you know, being willing to say that like, it's not their fault. Right. That I encouraged them to take this action. Mm -hmm. Recognizing my own failure also means that I'm more confident when I recognize that it definitely wasn't my fault, Mm -hmm. you know, like, man, if that person had just come or just gone this other direction, we would have won that encounter. Yeah. But I only can stand on those legs and actually say that when I'm willing to criticize myself first. If I can say, could I have done something better there first? Mm -hmm. No, I don't know what else I could have done. 
well, what, what also happened? Right. You know, but it's that ego. People don't want to do that. They don't want to ever think everyone deserves to be challenger in their head. Right. They don't deserve to be in silver or gold or whatever. Yeah. They're, they're a challenger and you held them back. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. They only fed six kills in 10 minutes. That's, their, that's your fault. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the victim mentality. Um, but what you said there was very interesting because I think this is a really cool concept. And I think um, people have a hard time putting it into words. But there is a process where you made a mistake and then you had a choice. You either recognize it, acknowledge it, or you do everything but. You can blame it on mm -hmm. someone else. You can say, this is unfair, that's unfair. Or you can just say, oh, it wasn't a mistake. It just happened. Um, but if you acknowledge it, then you're acknowledging the reality of the situation, or at least what is closer to the reality of the situation. And you're gaining clarity. So you're getting clarity in how things work and an understanding of the system as a whole that you're currently in. And then from there, with that clarity, you're able to make better choices, which you could, you could, uh, you could almost uh, label as, as well, I wouldn't say label, but you could associate with wisdom. And then there's a cycle there as well, because once you're in that cycle, you kind of keep in that cycle. There'll be sure, hitches yeah. along the way, but it's a cycle of clarity, reality, and wisdom, clarity, reality, and wisdom. And that's how people grow. Now, this is something that I'm very grateful for, but I think there are certain mediums that are more likely to result in that cycle than not. So when I was young, I, I think I was 12, probably around 12. I, I was, uh, I started Muay Thai, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Muay Thai, so it's a martial art, very, very heavy, brutal contact. Like uh, mm -hmm. there's touch sparring and then there's Muay Thai where you're hitting each other. You're, you know, you're hurting, you're not hurting each other, but you are making, you are conditioning your body to get hit. You get hit. Sure. Um, and, there's so many emotions and nerves and there's adrenaline and there's like, you know, like, oh, we're going to spar for the first time or I'm going to spar with that guy who goes way too hard or, yeah, yeah, you know, sure. or I'm actually going to fight and everybody's watching. So you have all of these emotions in place. You're hypercharged um, and you're it's almost like you're hypercharged. So you're you're more likely to be unstable or sure. now within that space. It's very, very difficult to say, I didn't fuck up, or I fucked up, and things, you know, it's very difficult to, to say, I didn't fuck up, it was the other guy's fault. The other guy was, you know, he was too good. He beat me up, oh, there's nothing I could do. It's like, you know, it's just, right. it's just you and him. So it's like, did I, did I get hit? Oh, I messed up. Did I do this? Oh, there's a hole in my strategy. Is he doing something illegal? It's like, yeah, it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? So Muay Thai, for me, it, it cut all the bullshit out. So it made, it, it made me aware of like a lot of things that are going on in my head that don't serve me, that are trying to make me feel better in the moment, but ultimately will run me off a cliff. And the reason I bring this up, I think this is the reason why a lot of people or a lot of... Uh, you know, like there's the Goggins types or there's the Joe Rogan types or, or however. They always say that, yeah, you want to do martial arts, you want to do things like this. Because not only does it teach discipline, but it teaches you things like it, it forces you to confront yourself in areas that other things don't necessarily do. Uh, n other things don't necessarily, sorry. Like team sports, you can always blame your team. Uh, mm. Gaming, you can always blame equipment, uh, latency, network, whatever. You can blame the structure of the game, the more things you can blame, the less likely, I think, or the less conducive the atmosphere is to actually realizing those things and growing in that direction, growing as a person. I, I, sure, think, yeah. I think that would be the, the divide I there. Think, I think that's true. I think I agree in that I think that the the thing that is best for any person's individual development mm -hmm. is anything that c gets them to go through that process of self-analysis mm -hmm. and and to be better at it requires you to be willing to just be self-analyzing yeah um i think i think any time that you can test yourself with no other things you can blame i mean people will always find something to blame right yeah. like people to some degree even i mean i think it's good that you've done that i took martial arts too and i know people who would always you know, I remember when I would spar, I took Taekwondo in my teens yeah. and I would spar and I was known for kicking and really high. Yeah. And every time I would kick, this kid would turn his back to me. Right. Well, why? And like, uh, he'd just cower 
Ah, right? tower, yeah. And, and, but that, then it was, oh, that's your fault. You don't kick. Don't kick him in the back. I'm like, well, I'm not kicking him. Like, uh, I'm kicking him in the back, but, like, I stop because, like, I'm not kicking him as hard as I could because that's his back. I'm like, uh, yeah, you could injure him. Uh, and I'm like, he needs to stop turning his back to me. No, 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 that's on you. You have to have control. And I'm like, uh, I am having control. He needs to stop, you know? So he sees himself not able to react. And what's the thing? I'm the bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. I'm the bad guy. Everyone's saying, you know, I'm bad because he does this thing that could get him injured. Yeah. And I remember going to the instructor one time and said, listen, I'm never going to stop to kick me out of your class. Yeah. And he's like, what? I said, I said, kick me out of your class. I will never stop. In fact, from now on, if he or anyone turns their back to me mid kick, Mid kick. It's You're going like to kick super hard. <laughs> I'm going to kick as hard as I can because yeah. we all signed safety waivers. So if he gets his spine shattered, that's on him. That's on and him. He's like, yeah, fuck and he spine. said, why would, why would you do that? I said, because you are allowing him, you're telling him that you are teaching him self-defense. And next time he's in a fight, he's going to get fucking brain. How old were you with for this? 17. That's great. Like, that's really, so yeah, that's, that's. That's what I was going to talk. I didn't expect that from you. That seems very principled. Like, I'm not saying you're not very principled. I'm not saying anything. I'm not well, saying yeah, anything bad. You don't expect yeah, to like, I didn't yeah. expect you to be so like, oh, this is, this is what it is. Because that's exactly what it is. I right. had uh, my old uh, coach. His name, was, his name was Art and Tommy. I, people have seen Tommy. He's fighting in Thailand right now. Um, but Art, a, he's a world-class coach. So he, he's taught sure. uh, Thanachai. He's, he's, uh, his last student fought or his last last student now fought Sanchai. Um, like he's he's he knows Muay Thai very well. And sure. so what he would do with Tommy is he would say, Okay, you're you're my only student. I'm fixated, focused on you. I will make you good. And so there's a lot of things. There's pad work, bag work, there's uh running, uh, sparring, clinching, all of these things. Now, sparring, it's something that's happened. As things get more popular, things get watered down. With sparring, you need to be able to spar light with control, playfully, you know, not to get injured. And then you also need to be able to, not, you don't want to do this all the time, but you need to be able to turn it on so that you can right. actually hit each other and get hit. Obviously, you don't want to knock each other out, but you do want to be like, okay, you, have to, you yeah. have to worry about me now. And I have to worry about you. So then when it comes to the fight, it's like, now you can go an extra level. So that's exactly what was happening. Art, he has, he hits hard. Like he hit, he's, sure. he hits I, the hardest I've ever been hit in my life through all my fights, whatever it was hit, uh, sparring with him. Like he hit me, it turned me around. Um, yeah, I, I'm surprised. I, I think I got a concussion from it. Um, but anyway, so he's sparring with Tommy and for like 30 to 40 minutes at a time, Tommy's obviously not as good as, as, as he could be like, oh, Tommy can get way, way, way better. But Art's like, okay, now. You have to learn this. And it's, I'm coming at you, and I'm better than you. I'm going to hit you, and it's going to hurt. And you I need to that. stay engaged with me. So that's what Tommy would do. He would, he would turn his back. He would shell. And then he would be like, at a point, it wasn't right away. So he took a lot, and then eventually he would disengage and turn his back. And it was exactly that. Art's like, okay, if you do that one more time, I'm not teaching you. You're done. You're out. Why? Because now I know that at after you are pushed to a certain point, you give up. You turn your back to something. You say, oh no, I don't want to fight you anymore. I don't want to win. I need to run away. And that's a very, very bad habit pattern to reinforce in a person. You cannot from there just be like, oh, back off. No, now you yeah, have to hit him in the back. Knowing, knowing when to run away is a practical skill, <laughs> but if you are competing with someone in a fight, that's not what you want to do. Exactly. You want it's, to be like, oh, no, I'm going to weather this. Yeah. That, that knowing when to run away should be something you are cognizant of. It should not be an instinct. It yeah, should, should be something. It should be something you choose to do because it's the right decision to go, oh, shit, that's three dudes. I should probably run away. Yeah. Is very different from I'm fighting this guy one on one in the middle of the fight. I turn my back to him. Yeah, I can't handle this anymore. I wanted to do this. I decided to do this. And now I'm too scared to do it. And. I'm going to put myself in a in a set of behavior patterns that will reinforce that. Right. It's it's an inst well. It, it, if you're doing it, if you're doing something on instinct, then it needs to be trained out of you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's that's, that's well, really I, cool. 
I will say, I will say, going back to your point about like being, you know, young and like being very practical at that age, I will say I was also someone who just generally, I, I doubt I was being like right now, if I said that, I'd probably be being very pragmatic, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I said, no, you're, I'd probably calmly say, no, you're training him to die one day, mm -hmm. right? But in, in that situation, I was kind of just mad. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was being a teenager yeah. and just was smart enough to recognize why he was wrong and then use yeah. that to tell him that he's wrong. But it probably wasn't as mature as it <laughs> as it sounds coming yeah. out of adult me's mouth, you know. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but that's that's fair. Like that's that's the thing too. It's that's an interesting thing cuz you say you were just you were mad and it ended up being right, but why were you mad? Well, you were mad because the situation was wrong. And even though you might not be able to articulate it, it helped you articulate it. And that, I think that's an interesting sure. thing as well, um, which I guess goes well, back to what we were talking about way back, back when. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, emotions can have validity, mm -hmm. but they are not the answer. They're not necessarily, yeah, they're not necessarily the answer. And I, I think that also goes back to also the thing that, uh, this is what I remember from Rod, you have to do the work in order to have a seat at the table. And I think mm. the more work you do, the more you can actually trust your emotions. So sure, if yeah. I become very developed, very like, oh, like, a, you know, I'm, I'm whoever, whoever, like I'm, I, no, I guess not Iron Man, S uh, Superman, something. Superman without powers, and I still get everything done. It's like, okay, cool. That feels wrong. That probably is wrong because I know who I am. Whereas if I'm some five-year-old, oh, that feels wrong. Oh, it could go either way. You know, you don't have the experience, the understanding, the wisdom, the, the, the constant reinforcement of what your unconscious is trying to tell you. I think that's, mm. I think that's what, uh, that's a good differentiation to make nowadays too, is that this is going to be, I guess, I think people are going to be upset at me for saying this, but I think it's true, is that the validity, same thing, that word, the validity of your feelings are not equal to the validity of other people's feelings in terms of certain applications so certain mm. people will their feelings are fuck i don't i don't like using the word valid i i would say their feelings are more <laughs> use they're they're more useful um they're more yeah they're more useful in the context that they're in in the yeah. context that they're in and so this has to be established that no useful is a good word everybody's feelings are not just like they're they're different and just they're based on the facts that go around them yes and just like feelings don't don't just automatically like everything. Oh, you feel this way. Oh, that it must be that way. Just like it's not like that. I think it's the same thing with people. Like you're gonna take someone and like uh, let's say let's say so, like a, a Navy SEAL or someone who's been in a lot of combat sure. and a lot of danger, and then you're gonna be walking in the woods with him and four other people, and he's like, we need to be careful right now. Something feels off. It's like you better listen to that guy. But if some guy sure. who's always scared, you know, he's just typing on his keyboard all the time and and never confronts anything, is like, oh, we need to be careful. It's like, well, you always want to be careful. Maybe we can take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, I think that's a that's that is the good way of put it. Yeah, it's 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 the value of the feeling in the context that it's in and the facts around it. Uh huh. Right? So like one of the things that I always, this is an interesting one to me. One of the things that I get into conflict with people a lot is memory, uh. right? People, I will be surrounded by people who regularly inform me that they have a bad memory and don't remember things. Okay. Well, I don't have a bad memory. Yeah. I think that my memory is very, very good. Mm -hmm. And I remember a lot of things in detail. And even roughly, I have a good, I, I always have a good sense of time frame of when those things happened. Mm -hmm. It's one of my strengths, right? Mm -hmm. um, so then I will be in conflict with someone about events. And they will go, why don't you ever believe me? And then I'll go, because you are contesting your memory that you have verbatim told me is bad against my memory that I have absolute confidence in. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I, why would I, why would I trust yours? Yeah. What, what, why would the default be, oh, I just listen to you. There's right. no reason. You gotta, you gotta, like, there, that's, an, that's another thing that I've, I've seen with people is that uh, it's almost this concept of they don't trust themselves, therefore you shouldn't trust yourself either. And it's like, well, I don't understand that because I've done, or I've done, and I've seen people who have done a lot of work 
in figuring out who they are and battling with themselves and forming a relationship with themselves where it's like, yes, I do trust my, my decisions where it's like, um, why don't you believe me? It's like, oh, well, cause I trust myself. Obviously it's because I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm thinking. And there's nothing that shows me that I shouldn't. Right. right. I don't, yeah. I don't have any reason to not believe myself. And you haven't given me any reason to believe you're more reliable yeah. than me. You right? put that a lot then better. Now, yeah. 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 It, it's not to say that I couldn't be wrong. It's to say that, you know, when we do the math, when we put everything on the scale, nothing has tipped it away from me. Mm -hmm. You know, why wouldn't I trust myself? Now, obviously, some people trust themselves when they shouldn't. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, mm -hmm. but like... I think someone in chat just mentioned um, that's just listening to an expert in their domain of expertise. I think that's the thing, though. Everything is about context, right? Because I've had, uh, let me talk to you about the domain of expertise, right? Doctors, right? Uh, doctors are really interesting. We need them. They know a lot more than us. But I firsthand had a health condition that took years to resolve because doctors refused to just see it what it was. And they kept trying to go deeper and deeper into the issue. And it wasn't until we went to a doctor who was like a little bit quirky and had some like naturopathic leanings. Then he was like, just sounds like your digestion's fucked up. Let's just get you on some enzymes and see how you are in a year. And in a year, I was, I was just better. You're better. Was better. Yeah. I've it, had the just, exact same experience. Yeah. And it, it took multiple years and various drugs and tests that resulted in nothing or made me feel bad. Yeah. And it, this guy just said, Sounds like your digestive system's just been fucked and it needs a little help. Let's yeah. just give it a help for a year and then see where you're at. Yeah. You know, and that was the solution. That fixed right? it. But I, I had to distrust the seven expert. experts yeah. before I went to one that was a little bit a little bit like different. And then he was the one who had the answer, you know. Mm -hmm. Um so I think it's like yes, like yes, you should trust people on their expertise. Um but like, I think that like, it's all, everything is a matter of, of, of weighing the results. I think that it, it's weird that it took the eighth doctor to say, huh, seven doctors fucked this up. Maybe we should try something else. I don't know why after the first two doctors, the third doctor didn't go, man, none of this worked. I wonder if it's simpler than we think it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, uh, well, I've, I've done the, I've had the exact same thing. That's, that's. What started for me as, well, it started a thought process because I've had, I've had a very similar experience with doctors. Doctors, and I've, I've gone to school with people that I know are going to become doctors. So this kind of illuminated something for me is that doctors are just people. And there's a mm -hmm. lot of people and people are good and bad and both and people are smart and stupid and both people are short sighted and people are scared and people, every single person is subject to human emotions regardless. And every single, right. uh, every single person is, is subject to uh, the mistakes that people make. And just because someone is an expert doesn't mean they aren't subject to those things um sure. that uh, so the way i would put it is like okay there's an expert like let's say a physicist or a mathematician or someone who really knows his stuff it's like okay you know your stuff i'm gonna they've earned their seat at the table you've earned your you've, you've earned your seat yeah i i'm gonna approach you with that in mind you are the expert you probably well you most certainly know more than me in terms of your sure. field but i also have to be cautious and careful in that, hey, maybe you don't actually care about solving my problem. Like maybe for you, it's about uh, getting patients in and out in a timely manner. Like like a lot of doctors, I think I think the average doctor visit in Canada was eight minutes per patient uh, a couple of years ago, and I was like, that's not enough. That's not even enough to get family history. Or you know, maybe what you are in. in in an expert in isn't actually applicable to my problem because sure. i know a lot of doctors the way they do things is family history okay it's it's a uh, you're predisposed to this you're predisposed to that let's do some tests run for these things that will probably be what it is rather than okay let me look and look at the problem you know and you know what oh sorry i hit my mic yeah that's that's really funny because so I was having digestive issues, right? Mm -hmm. Very specific, just wasn't digesting food at the intestinal level. Well, all the other doctors knew that my sister has cystic fibrosis, mm. which 
regularly has a enzyme deficiency. And my mother has an enzyme deficiency that she's taken supplements for. And they knew this. And rather than address that issue of just a generally weak digestive system on the genetic level, right, uh, they ignored that. And it took the eighth guy to go like, oh, yeah, that. that's sitting right in front. It's probably that, yeah. you know? Why? Isn't that weird? Yeah, well, why would that be? It does. Um, because it's egos, I think. You think so? So I've, I've heard with doctors... Make you generally don't want to um you want to keep the previous doctor's opinion away from the new doctor's opinion because they tend to just agree with each other is that potentially what was going on oh hold on maybe hold on. okay yeah. oh go ahead yeah, no, no my uh my audio disconnected but we're good uh, okay. yeah um i i'm not sure i'm not 100 percent sure i mean obviously i was younger back then yeah. right like um but it it's it's just interesting because I think people, they, they don't want, they, they have different priorities, right? And they have different, when I say ego, sometimes I don't just mean like being pompous. They just, you know, oh, I think it's this. Let's put them on this drug, right? Mm -hmm. Let's put them on this supplement. Let's just do that. And they don't want to think about what that might, you know, what, what's the obvious answer here? Mm -hmm. Why they don't want to focus on the obvious answer because they want to, uh, go with just their first gut response. They don't want to listen to your feedback. They don't want to hear that, you know, well, that didn't work. We've done that already. That didn't work. You mm -hmm. know, it's mm -hmm. like, well, no, you just didn't do it right. I'm definitely, I got this. Yeah. You know, they, they don't want to trust it. And we see this a lot, uh, especially in medicine. I mean, you hear about women all the time going to doctors and talking about their symptoms and the doctor just kind of ignores it for something else. Yeah. And then that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear about this all the time. I mean, I think we could move this away from doctors and talk about almost anything. Yeah, it right? doesn't have to be doctors. I think it, it also comes down to, again, intention. Um, because we could say, like, okay, I could say with a, with instead of a doctor, I could say an engineer. Sure. Right. A, an engineer. Okay, they're going to design this building. Fuck, I've had so many problems with architects actually recently. But... They're going to design Architect. this architects. Yeah, the architecture of that's, a building. That's and, an interesting one. And uh, like, it's just communications and systems. Like every everything is slowly getting worse. But let's say an engineer is is commissioned to design or build build. Let's say a bridge, easy one. Build a bridge. Sure. Okay. Now there are engineers that will go and say, "Hey, I'm going to build the best damn bridge I can." Because that's sure. what I want to do. Like, this is my passion. I like building bridges. I want bridges. this to be a really good bridge. I want this to be a good bridge. I want this to be an expression of myself. I want this to be my best work so I can do better work down the line. Great engineer. Probably going to, you know, he'll make mistakes and stuff like that. But he is aiming sure. in a direction. You could say that person's an engineer. Now, there are people that are, uh, well, it's always been this way. But I think it's, it's increasingly so. There are people that are just, like, good enough. So... Mm -hmm. Bridge, it needs this specification, it needs this material, it needs to hold this much load. Okay, let's test it. Is that good enough? That's good enough. You know, could it be better? Yeah, it could, but, you know. Eh, good enough. It's good enough. We're, you know. in, we're in budget, eh, it's good enough. It's good enough. You know, that's done, let's go on to the next one. Where their goal is just to get the project done. They're not actually embodying the spirit of the project necessarily unless it's just get as many bridges done as you can but they're just like no next one next one next one and i think that's how that's how a lot of people can be in a lot of different things doctors is the easy one and i it's not that i necessarily have anything against doctors it's just that it's a very easy one to talk about um, yeah it's, it's one everyone can relate to everyone's dealt with that you know everyone's dealt with doctors i've met doctors who are very interested in solving the problem like, they're like, okay, this is a problem. We're going to do this, this. We're going to figure it out, right? I'm going to figure out what's wrong with you. And then doctors that are just like, yeah, you're just going to, you know, I can't do anything. Or I don't want to do anything. Or, you know, try this. See if that works, you know? I also know that they often want to over, they can want to overcomplicate things. I, I was, as you were talking, I was thinking back how when I moved, I had to go to a different doctor to get my prescription refilled for mm -hmm. just my, my enzymes, right? Mm -hmm. And I went to this new person and there's like, well, I'm only going to prescribe six weeks instead of like, I think I was getting like six months at a time or something like that, you know? And it's like, why? Because I want to run all these tests. I think there's something else wrong. And we're like, no, this is working. She's like, well, I'm only going to do this. I was like, okay, fine. We'll go to a different doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, and, and like, it's like, that sucks. Like you won't, you won't. And, and it wasn't that much long after before I just didn't need it anymore. Oh, great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fix but, yourself. But, but, 
Well, yeah, it did because what it was is I just had uh, I just needed to like give my body some help until it could yeah. heal itself. Yeah, but it wasn't going to heal itself if I kept punishing it, poking, <laughs> it prodding. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You you need to eat to live, but eating was the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I know that was, one. But it's it's very interesting. Um, it it's one of those things where I think the you know, I mean, someone in chat said, you know, it, it, well, if a bridge fulfills all requirements, that's a bridge. And it's like, yeah, that's true. But if we always strive, I was thinking about this in a conversation, you know, before you and I were here, I was talking, Emerald and I went, um, we went out and grabbed some food, went to a place, got some breakfast sandwiches, um, had some coffee, and we were talking. And I was talking about how um, the, there's this thing I've t I, that, that comes up a lot, right? When we talk about like politics and society, mm -hmm. whenever I talk with people, um, there's a so so I always like to reference certain fictions like Star Trek, um, Transmetropolitan, um, Eclipse Phase slash Altered Carbon. All of these futures Fuck. that are post scarcity. Hold on, with that I I watched Altered Carbon. I liked the the setting. I liked all the stuff about it. Fuck, I hated the show. But anyway, continue. Like I like the first season. The second season is terrible because I've read the books. Oh. Um, and, and the, the first season very closely with only some minor changes yeah. follows book one very, very, very well. But the second season is a weird, super screwed up amalgam of book two and three. Why do you think that happens? Uh, I, I, well, being a media guy, I can tell you why, if you want to know. I want to know. Um, what happens is, is that the se the first season does a certain thing and then they look at the following books and they say, this is a lot. Um, and, uh, most of our viewers probably never read the books. So we think that for, we can produce an entire season using all of the, the, this individual story. It's usually, it's, it can be a mixture of things. It's either money or ego, right? So, or both mm -hmm. where they go, it'll be cheaper. So for example, um, if I were going to look at season two, um, if you look at the books, book one Oh, sorry, book two is set on a, a planet, I don't remember the name of it, and it's all about the civil war that's going on. And there's a lot of traveling around, there's a lot of war stuff, it's very big scale, and then there's like the individual stuff, and then going to d this dig site and discovering a thing. There's a lot of stuff with like weird drones and little pieces of technology that you'd have to all animate and do all this stuff. What if we just left that stuff out, grabbed this more static stuff mm. that... So, so book three has them on another planet, and they end up encountering all of these people that uh is also like a lot of traveling a lot of fantastical stuff a lot of body switching um a lot of animated stuff what if we take all the stuff that's sort of the st the static stuff take this cool name which is carrera's wedge reduce it down from an army because it was a, a mercenary force to, to f uh, five guys five people instead of them, and then instead of them being yeah. the military we're going to make them secret agents uh, and, and and so now now you only need a cast of like 10 people instead of a cast of a couple hundred people and you only need like three stages instead of like all these different scenarios so you can save a lot of money and then in their head what they're saying is well we've kept sort of generally the story but now we've created one season without a whole lot of greater conflict yeah the best right it yeah, well, and they, but they think that you haven't read the book, so you're going to be fine with you're it gonna be because fine. it's going to, it's going to be in the in the vein of the first one. But in the first book, they're all they're always just on on Earth dealing with this one, this one mystery, yeah. it's this one plot with only a few key characters. But book two and book three are way bigger and would to create them would be more budget. So someone says it's too expensive, and someone else says my ego's big. I know I'm good at this. I know uh, what I'm, I'm going to make it great. That's, and then they make a piece of shit. That's and this this is the thing is like it, it this is what bothers me is people still think that they can take something that is good or great or beautiful, they themselves can modify it and from there they expect the same result or the same effect or the same scope, but what it's almost it happens. I've I don't think I've ever seen a case where a sequel or something where they have modified their original work comes out better than the original work. It's yep. almost certainly always far worse. And I see that again as in like, oh, it's good enough. You know, like, yeah, oh, it's good it's, enough. It's, it's good, good enough. enough. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, but I want to I kind of pull it back real quick yeah. to what the original point I was going to make is in a lot of these settings, it's somewhat supposed to, like post-scarcity, right? Like there's, there's, there's printers, mm -hmm. 
um like you can 3d print you anything much. you know people aren't starving to death people can 3d print things you know <laughs> um and and obviously all these all of these situations other than maybe star trek are not utopias mm -hmm. right but they're approaching it there we've they've dealt with a lot of the problems and the problems that they have now are based on something else you look at that even in um uh the expanse where earth essentially its biggest problem is having too many people and not enough uh jobs right but mm. even that problem they've solved they've solved that problem i watched right? that yeah um and so then it's like well then why is there any conflict well the issue is when you leave earth the issues mars has these objectives and then mars is in conflict with earth's interests yeah the the, the issues aren't scarcity anymore for earth the issues are something else mm -hmm. and so you in a lot of these settings there's other conflict or in star trek there's just the conflict is only outside of the of the uh, federation in the federation all things are good everybody's just self-actualizing right sure so i talk about that it's like well sh you know that wouldn't that be great if we had 3d printers and can solve those problems and for some reason, instead of anyone saying, yeah, that would be great if we could achieve that, they start to go into some like political diatribe of why we couldn't achieve that and and like why it would never work and we should never do anything like that. And I'm sitting there going like, well, hold on, wait. I mean, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, we probably can't. I don't think we can 3D print a hamburger, a finished cooked hamburger right now, or 3D print an entire functioning car without me having to build it or put it together or anything. Yeah. We're not there yet. Um but it would be cool it would be cool and shouldn't we want to achieve that yeah like, shouldn't our goal be to achieve the optimal society we can yeah yeah it was like a i heard lex friedman say this uh with the heat death of the universe and i think it just it just comes down to how people well i'll talk about this in a sec but he said yeah. like the heat death of the universe is just a it's just an engineering problem you know, it's sure. it's not, oh, everything's going to end and we're all screwed. It's like he looks at it and is like, oh, that's just another engineering problem that we have to solve. And have to solve it. I think it comes down to this idea of, I don't think it's how people are orientated. I think it's how people have chosen to orientate themselves. And it's that there are people, like I've had this problem, same thing, same problem as you. It's like where it's like, hey, look at this. Wouldn't this be a cool idea? And, you know. What what if it if we made it happen? What would it look like surrounding it? It's 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 for me. It's exploration. It's like okay, let's let's figure something out. That's not just what we we have right now. And for other people, it it has been for me. It has been like yeah, like no, that would never work. Or no, that's not based on anything. Or no, there's no way we could ever do that. Or um, it's just bad. Why is it bad? It is. It it was uh yeah it, it and with someone in particular it it's always like finding ways to stay where we are yeah rather than finding no ways no desire to change no desire like yeah just no this is what I know I can't accept this okay where are the studies where is this it's like all of those things stop you from exploring and potentially getting somewhere better than where you are right now. If you get better than where you are right now, it's either going to be very slow or it's going to be just by random haphazard chance. You know, yep. it'll, it'll never be like you took that leap. Like you saw that, you're like, I want or that. I'm going to take that on them. Yes, or forced you, on you them. Look at, you look at people who just never adopted technology, right? Computers came into the world and they just said, I no, we don't need those, yeah. you know, and, and, and they stayed that way until their job stopped existing. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, to live, I have to adopt this now. And so they're behind everyone and they're just forced into it. And they're never as competent as the people who spent 30 years as early adopters at a young age yeah. because they wouldn't adapt. You know, you see, you literally see this. Yeah. Right now in the workforce. And I think, know? I think there's like, there's a lot of cool things. Like I, I, one thing that's very clear, and I don't think how people can deny it at all right now, even though they act like it's not this way, is we don't know how our minds work and we don't sure. know how people work. We don't know how they work. We can model them and we can find patterns and we can apply patterns to people and they can be accurate. But like there was something that was said where uh, I think there was an experiment run where they took a bunch of kids, two groups of kids. One group of kids was like, okay, look, you are good because you're smart. And then the other group of kids were, you are good because you work hard. 
and they mm. approached the same problems, the same puzzles, whatever. The group that said that was uh, that was told you are good because you work hard, regardless of their intelligence level, did better than the group that was smart overall, and they enjoyed it more. That's what mm. that's what was reported. And I've had this. I've 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 had experiences with people where um, they have a certain thought pattern, which is like I am this because of this. And they don't realize that that thought pattern actually kneecaps them in certain situations. There are agree, yeah. more optimal thought patterns than others. Just like, like, for example, with this, like, I think both you and I are more attuned to exploration. Like, I, I like that mm -hmm. idea. I like seeing what could be, not just what is. Um, of course, still based in reality. But... I think we would do very, very good in a lot of different spaces, whereas the people that are more like, no, this is what is, and we have to stay there, would do good in other spaces. But the problem nowadays is everybody is just mixed up, and you're designating certain spaces not based on how effective you, the person would how, how how effective the person would be with how they think and how they interact and how they behave and more so just like a random haphazard thing like oh like yeah it, it, i'm supposed to get this person or are this feet like it's, it's just it it it's like building a car with airplane materials it's like why yeah yeah i mean you can you can yeah it's probably not gonna no, no, work but, really well i think some i think i think there is a place for it I think if you are trying to achieve the land speed record in the salt flats, there's a place for that. Yeah. Yeah, there you uh, yeah, go. Sure. A, that's a very specific problem with very specific solution. Yeah. Um, I think in most cases, uh, I don't need my daily driver to have a jet engine in it. To have a jet engine. <laughs> yeah. That would yeah. probably be that's really actually, bad. So I drive a six cylinder Mustang and I, there are two kinds of people, people who go, that's great. And people who, that I love your car. People who go, why isn't it, a, why isn't it an eight cylinder? And I'm like, because that almost doubles my gas consumption for my daily driver, yeah. but I'm not going to the track and uh -huh. the speed limit around here is not very high. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and know, so I, I wonder... Practical problem with a practical solution. I wonder what that is in people, because I've seen it with games, too. I've seen it with all sorts of things. Well, here's this. Well, why aren't you playing this instead? Here's this. Well, why didn't you do this instead? I, I wonder where that comes from. And the, the first thing that comes to mind is obviously it's from childhood, where yeah. the parents were like that. But then what made the parents like that? You know, like what thought process was there? That's stuff that I've, I've always found interesting. Like figuring out people, yeah. I, people are often a um, product of their development and product of their environment, right? Mm. And and often they're not aware of that. Uh, this is one of the things I remember having conflict with. So uh, more stories from Kevin's childhood. Wow. Right. Um, when I was uh, there was a, a a girl I was dating, and I remember I had a conflict with her parents. And it fundamentally came down to their like belief system on adults versus young. I was I was in my twenties, by the way. Like I was not like a teen, mm -hmm. you know. And I remember they were talking to me one time like they were my parent. And I said, "Hey, uh, you're not my parent. Mm -hmm. Well, we're her parents." I'm like, "That's nice, but I'm not your child. I'm your peer." Like, and they don't like that. They're no. like, "That's not true." And I said, "Oh, okay. We'll go commit a crime, and I'll go volunteer for jury duty." Yeah. How does that sound? Because yeah. I am your peer legally. That's you are not my parent. <laughs> you you do funny. not. And I remember we had a big long argument, and this is the conclusion of that argument. They're like, "Well, the way that we were raised was that we listened to our elders." I'm like, "Oh, okay. Well, okay. So you're in your 40s. How old's your father?" And she's like, "He's 65." I'm like, "My father's 70, and he taught me that you should treat me as your equal. And since by your standards." he is older than your dad that makes that means your dad needs to defer to him yeah and that means you need to defer to him which means you need to defer to me You're right yeah 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 and she didn't know what to do yeah the bad guy, she just she just got flustered yeah right and it was this whole idea of like you you her own she couldn't circumvent that argument because it essentially came out of, she was just trying to say well she was raised this way therefore that's correct and i'm saying okay well i wasn't raised that way yeah uh, well so where do we where do we meet this and is that's, Go that's ahead. what's interesting. I, no, 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 that's it. I just think that's interesting. This is, a, this is an interesting thing because I've, I've had uh, similar conversations like this. And it's like, oh, well, which one's right? Which one's wrong? And, it, and the answer is technically neither. Like they both have utilities. Um, but 
the way I like to look at it is a system of damages. So you have system A, system B, a system, a framework A, framework B, and they each come with damages. And they each come with uh, damages on a societal level and on an individual level. Um, yeah. And ideally, you want people that can jump between both as suits the situation. But generally, people aren't like that. So yeah, and twenty-two-year-old me wasn't really a very adaptable young man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I can be the same. But the, the whole respect your elders things. Like right now, today, there are like kids that will swear at their parents, and parents oh, yeah, can't do yeah. anything. And it's like, well, where did the respect your elders go? Because I think that was actually very useful in the idea that you want to respect people that by default have more experience than you because you're five, six, ten, and they're 30, 40. They've lived three times. So they are way more likely, way more, like they might not, very small chance, but they're way more likely to know more uh, about the world and how to approach it than you are. And if that is taken in the concept, uh, in the context of like, yeah, I need to respect people that are older than me, but then you add the second framework, which is the second system of damages of, okay, I know who I am now. Um, so now how likely are you to know more than me when I'm 20 and you're 40? Well, not nearly as much when I was five, seven, 10. Still, still you are likely, but then how do you actually live your life? Are you being dogmatic? Are you not? Are you approaching this critically? Are you doing, you know, all these other factors come in. And, yeah. and when You're now hitting exactly what I was thinking as you talk. Yeah, yeah. And so when it comes to governing a society, they're not the first level of analysis is all it's gonna be for the majority of people. The second level sure. is never gonna be reached. And so you have a system of damages. So respect your elders, I think, is is way better for a society. On an individual level, it's generally good. Um, but you also want uh, facets of the second system, which is, no, we're equals. Like you and mm -hmm. I, we are both people. Your understanding, my understanding, we're both going to apply them to a situation. Because it's like, that's what happens when you, when you get older. Like you have people that are 25 working with people that are 40, 60. You have, mm -hmm. And then you have, you have differences in ability. It's not just age garners ability. It does for a long period of time, but then it switches off. But it's, it's all too complicated to address in every single situation, you know what I mean? I think I, I think something you said was about where I would say is the most reasonable uh, way to sort of go about it societally, right? Mm -hmm. When you are what one would be considered a child, mm -hmm. right? And I don't mean young. Nowadays, people are treating 20-year-olds like they're children, and I'm like, fuck off, you know? <laughs> um, but like, you know, if you're 14 and someone who's in their 30s says, you know, hey, don't do that. That's dangerous. You yeah. know, probably you should respect your elders, mm -hmm. right? That because you are, you are young, you are a child, you know, you are, you are inexperienced. Um, you are still developing, but even if that is true in your mid twenties, you're still learning and developing. And someone who's in their fifties has a lot of worldly experience. There is a practical problem that arises, mm -hmm. which is you legally are adults that person, everything about society changes in, in the fact that, you know, when you are, I remember I was talking about this the other day, I, we were like watching Stranger Things and our roommate, mm -hmm. Emerald's Eyes roommate was, I, you know, I, I forgot what they said. And I was like, they're talking about like arresting a kid. And I'm like, actually, they can't. Like mm -hmm. the police can't. There's a whole process to taking custody of a minor. Mm -hmm. The police can't. They can do it to return it to the parents, right? So if a kid is out, say we're taking you home. Mm -hmm. But even if they've committed a crime, you can't just take them to jail. Mm -hmm. You actually have to take them to their parents unless a judge gives you a warrant to say that you can take them to jail. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a ton of laws regarding uh, minors that commit crimes, you right. know? Um, and so when you think about it in that context, it's because there's a lot around being a kid that is very different from being an adult. But once you enter the world of being an adult, um, you are responsible for yourself. And if you do anything wrong, that's what everyone's going to say. So then when someone tries to tell you, you have to listen to them. Mm -hmm. That's a practical problem because if you do what they say and that goes bad, they're not the one who gets in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're a child and an adult tells you to do something and it goes wrong, the child isn't actually at fault. Yeah. Right. So it, it, they may still have experience and it's probably worth listening to someone who knows more about a subject than you. Um, 
But I also know people who are, for example, when I was in sales before I was in what I do now, uh, I knew people who had been doing sales for 30 years. And you know what? Their ideas suck. Yeah. And they didn't work out. Right. And when I became a product manager, I just ignored everyone who told me how sales work and said, no, I want you guys to do things this way. This is how we're going to focus. This is how we're going to focus pushing this product. We're not going to do it this way. I don't care about that, you know, and that worked, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's because there is a point at which knowledge becomes outdated. Again, mm -hmm. we're going to the world of practical problems. They mm -hmm. do know more than me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're always right. They may be stuck in their ways. They may be, you know, just unwilling to change like we talked about earlier. Um, and so, you know, it's, I think that dividing line really is around the time that you have to make decisions for yourself and come to those consequences. You can seek advice, but advice is not de facto the answer. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're 22 and someone's trying to tell you that because they're older than you, that that's de facto the answer, it's like, well, no, that's not the case. I, I can't live that way. I think that's, that's also an interesting thing because I think the internet makes that problem worse. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah, because now instead of, oh, who am I talking to? I'm talking to a five-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 37-year-old who has, who's homeless or whatever. The context sure. is, is ripped away from who you're talking to. And then all of a sudden, you have that happening. You have a bunch of interactions happening where people don't have the certainty of who they're talking to in terms of immediate... Uh, an obvious information. Okay, this person mm. seems like they're very successful. This person doesn't. This person is, um, you know, very strong, and this person isn't. Okay, how? Who? Why would I listen to like a guy that's 120 pounds tell me about bodybuilding? Doesn't make sense. Sure. But you can't tell the difference on the internet. And so what I think has happened. This is this is kind of cool. Is that because people have contended with that for years and years now? the the default i think it has facilitated the idea that everybody's opinion is equal to other people's opinions uh, is equal mm. because we can't we can't tell so they just yeah. they have to so that's something that has contributed to the, towards that where it's like oh that's obviously not true why would you think that i was like well the i have to treat this person as if they're they're you know they can lift as much as ben rice um, yeah, yeah, somehow equal. I, well, and also, I mean, even then, even if you could meet someone who could give you advice about bodybuilding, uh, what if they did used to be a bodybuilder? What if they just stopped for health reasons? Who knows? Right. You know? Yeah. Right. Like there's, it goes back to your earning your seat at the table, right? On the internet, for some reason, everyone's at the table. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's what I it is. I see this all the time. Yeah. I see this whenever I have a chat, whenever I have like you or anyone else on, there's always someone who will try to like um, uh, debate like the facts, right? They'll try to debate facts and we're not even like on facts. We're like trying to talk about a great subject. They'll try mm. to debate like facts, right? But like, like they won't provide any reason why like they'll just say like, I don't agree with, I remember, <laughs> actually I remember one time I was given an opinion on a video game mm. and I just, someone just asked me what my opinion was on something mm. and I was saying, um, I was just saying, uh, I think this is this way. And I explained the game and I explained my perspective on it. I said, so that's just how I feel about it and why, why I don't really love it. And someone just in chat in all caps was just like, I disagree. Great. And they just left. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was it? And then I, and I said, I said, well, why do you disagree? And then they just left. They just left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is on. And, and I always think that's, that's super funny, right? Yeah. Um, cause on the internet, like you said, it's just sort of like an open place. There's, you know, no one needs like any, any credentials. Yeah. And we see this with like some of the like, you see this with like some of these famous people on the internet, you know, who are just blasting bullshit. Yeah. Um, and, and, and they're making, they got like 50,000 viewers and millions of views and they're like in their mid twenties, they've never really worked any hard jobs. They got lucky. They have a, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. a, a, well, a, a famous family member that gave them a big start. They, they haven't got, done um, the work. And, 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 and yeah, they haven't done the work and, uh, it's and and they have no you know they 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 haven't done anything to prove them but somehow they've managed to through means facilitate this big listenership for something that they have like provably no knowledge on and they just spout nonsense and then people buy into that mm -hmm. people listen to these people and follow their actions and their their orders and their commands and 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 these people are fuck ups 
You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like they don't have it together, but mm-hmm. we're listening to them as if they are, and that's something really interesting. Yeah, and it's, you know? it's, it reinforces as well. That's that's what I'm. Uh, that's what I've been. I I I have trouble getting thoughts out of my head. Uh, it takes it takes a while, but it reinforces it because in normal day to day interaction, if someone mm-hmm. comes up to me and is like, uh, let's see. Oh, it's like a, an easy one that people can understand. They tell me something about no hit runs or they tell me something about Muay Thai. And I sure. look at them and it's like, okay, well, why don't you show me how you do it? And then they do it and it's, it's just completely off, completely wrong. You can tell right away they don't know what they're talking about. And then yeah. the reaction is, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to go talk to this guy or, or something like that. Or I'm going to go do my own thing. That's a negative sure. reinforcement that they get. Whereas instead of that on the internet, they will go and do, and say something or do something, and if they get negative reinforcement, maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't think in this day and age, people seem to think disagreeing is a horrible thing and that calling someone on their bullshit is a horrible thing. And I, I, when I say that, I mean you do it, like you don't seek it out. Like it, it's very different, but they will go and they will say something like, a, uh, you know, in Muay Thai, you want to, you want to, you want to, flex your quad as you kick or something yeah, and yeah, someone yeah, be like yeah. oh wow that's that's so insightful like you look at youtube comments and stuff oh like this guy's strategy he did this because the fundamentals were good you know and it's like well that's not really you know you're not actually providing any value if you said that to someone who actually knows what they're talking about and doing it would be like okay cool thanks like you know move along sure. um but on the internet that's not there so they keep doing it and then other, it, it provides a feedback into the system of other people that see them doing it and are like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, no, no, that makes sense. Here, like, let me, let me say that too. Or let me say something similar that I think. And then what happens is you have a bunch of people saying things that they don't know anything about and being reinforced for it. Um, and yeah. it, it creating like a, an acceptance that you don't need to do the work or you don't actually need to understand what you're talking about to say it or to have a seat at the table or to have a valid voice in the argument. I think that's, that's, and I think that causes, as we can see, a lot of problems in a lot of different areas. Well, you know what? And it's, it's funny. Someone in chat a second ago said like, to be fair, he can disagree and leave Giga Chad. And I thought that was funny. Cause it's mm-hmm. like, obviously I didn't care that the guy, I just was so fascinated when the guy did it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because it was like all capitals, I he hadn't said anything uh, as of yet. I disagree. And that's it. Yeah. What is, and I was, how like, does that work? Hear it. I was like, yeah, sure. What do you disagree about? Yeah. Like, let's go. Well, you know, like I'm, I'm ready. I think, but, but that's the thing. Everybody wants to have their voice heard at the table, but they don't actually like really have an argument. They just have feelings mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whoa, yeah. about the subject. And so they want to throw it in. Right. Cause feels want to say that. Yeah, feels good. Feels good to say, you're fucking wrong, bucko, but I'm going to immediately not hear a response in case it's negative. Yeah. And so this is, this is also what I think, too, is, is a lot of people have fixated on the idea of what someone can and cannot do. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he has the right to do it so he can do it. Like, like with Amazon, Amazon has the right to not sell anything that they disagree with. They are a private company. They can do that. And then uh, I found an issue with this. I was like, oh, well, that, yeah, sure, of course they can do it, but does that mean they yeah. should do it? Like, does right. that mean it's a good behavior pattern to, to embody themselves and also propagate throughout, throughout the world? It's like, you know, can is one thing, but just because someone can do something doesn't mean they should. And I think that's, that's a, and it's, 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 a, it's almost like a, in doing those things, sometimes they're making things worse than better in all dimensions, in the short term and in sure. the long term. So it's like, hey, like Well, it's it's not it's not I, I agree with everything you just said because I, I think that's really true, right? Like you have there's so there's different reasons why you shouldn't do it just because you can do something. And I, I see that a lot. I, I've seen that about a lot of things where people go, um, you know, they, they will they will say you can do something. Oh, well, to be fair, this person can do something. It's like, that doesn't mean it's good that they mm-hmm. did that. That's not the you argument. Know? Yeah, that's not what uh, yeah, we're talking not about. The, that's not what we're talking about. Like, you can do a lot of things, but does that bring value to you? Does that bring value to other people? Is that healthy for society? Is that mm-hmm. healthy for your growth as a person? You know, I can go just do heroin right now. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think I should. You know, like, I could just eat 
a, nothing but McDonald's hamburgers for the next month. Mm -hmm. But there was a movie about that. Don't do it. Yes. Yeah. You, exactly. You know what yeah. I mean, like, like it's it's there's there's still like a value statement mm -hmm. that you should have for for things, you know, and and. I agree. I agree with you completely. It's it's just because you can do something doesn't mean it's necessarily the right move, the best move. And again, with the internet, uh, everyone is 100% sure of what they're doing. They're putting it out there. Um, they can just walk away. In the great words of you know Tyler the Creator, just walk away. Hmm. Who's Tyler the Creator? Know, uh, it's rapper musician. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, says he said, "How is cyberbullying real? Yeah. Uh, just walk away. Just walk away." Well, yeah, and and uh, which is something I agreed with. Yeah, I remember I had a friend who was getting cyberbullied, and I said, "Then just turn the computer off." That's, and he was like, "What?" And I'm like, "Just fair. turn the computer off." Yeah, you don't have to what, engage. They in can't it. bother you if you're not there. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know? true. Yeah, um, and yeah. and uh, it's it's that's how I approach toxic people in like League of Legends. I just say, "You're annoying, lol," and then I mute them. And then mute. Yeah, it's on. And I, it's I just over. mute everything. Yeah. and there's nothing they can do about it. That's you it. Know? Yeah. yeah, I can't read their messages. I can't see their pings. It's yeah, I can't see their emotes. It's done. It's over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so you know, and that's I think important because people people have gotten used to this idea that they can just like engage in a negative way, um, in a toxic or unhealthy way. Um, and that that's just, they're just going to continue to do that. And I think if we all learn to just kind of go, no, I don't think I'm going to engage with that. Mm -hmm. Might people might have to get that negative reinforcement you were talking about. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting problem. I like, that's, that's something that I, well, we'd have to discuss over and over to examine it. I, I couldn't give an answer because on one hand it's like, yeah, you're, that's completely right. On, on the other hand too, it's also like, uh, it's like what I've, what, what I've seen happen over the last 10 years it's like okay hey look we're just not going to pay attention to you you guys are obviously crazy or you guys are obviously doing something that's not good and then yeah. all of a sudden it builds up so instead of it being negatively reinforced and eradicated or or you know taken out now it just builds up it builds up and they find people that that are agreeing or or they take Chambers. take someone young and feed into the righteous anger and then it just builds up and then it explodes and then i someone told me this and um i'm not I sure that's true yeah i'm not sure i disagree but i think the u.s might have another civil war you know, I'm not 100% sure. I'd, I'd like it if it didn't happen, because I don't... I'd prefer it didn't. <laughs> I'd prefer it didn't happen. I'm not in the U.S. I'm, I'm on the fence of I'm not super yeah. interested in that. Yeah, I don't I don't want that to happen. But right now, it's like, yeah, I think it's going to happen. And I think it comes down to a problem of, of scope. Because I think mm. within individual reactions, or when everything isn't hyper interconnected, I think walking away is like, oh yeah, great, whatever you leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. There's no reconciling this or it's not worth it. But on the internet, it adds a new dimension where it's like, it'll fester. It'll, it's like a, you could think of it like a body. It's like, okay, did you deal with the gangrene rot? It's like, no, you didn't. Well, now your whole leg's gone. You know, yeah. you're going to take damn. I wonder if, the, I wonder if, the, I'm not saying that's how it is, but I wonder if that's, that's how it is. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, and it's something, you know, I don't, I'm in the U S Obviously, I have an investment in a lot of this. Um, I think it's interesting to see how... I, I feel like that could happen. And I feel like it's it's scary. And I don't have the solutions, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a politician or a policy maker. Well, if I was a politician, I wouldn't have any solutions. But... <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. But if yeah. I'm, I'm not a policy maker. I, I'm just a young guy on the internet. My expertise are in things like quality management and entertainment don't ask me why i know both of those things mm -hmm. but i do um and uh well you could ask me but then i'd have to explain my life story mm -hmm. but uh you know i i i uh but i i feel like the biggest problem is there are people on every side of the equation that don't want to maximize the individual choice making of another person they want to dictate to one other per to another person their personal feelings or morals hmm. and we as a society aren't willing to sit down and go okay so which of these are really just feelings related and should be up to the individual and which ones are truly a practical problem that hmm. needs to be universal so we have it going sort of both ways where you know 
people have disagreements and they want the other person to innately follow their belief system. Mm -hmm. And what we really need is to just accept that regardless of our feelings, some things are practical, non-emotional, non-moral problem. They may be morality problem, but when you're dealing with a society at this scale, you have to be super pragmatic mm -hmm. and your individual, uh, especially faith-based morality probably isn't the right thing to go off of since we're way too much of a melting pot for that. Mm -hmm. You're going to have conflict if you're going it off of something that isn't just purely going back to remember when we talked about when to be philosophical and when to be pragmatic mm -hmm. and practical or objective is your, uh, Phyllis, your, your sort of philosophical faith-based, no, no, no grounding in reality, uh, belief system is probably not going to be the right one. Cause that's where the conflict is going to come from is when, when there isn't an answer and everyone says, well, I believe this and I believe this, we're going to fight over. We're going to fight. We're going to fight and we're going to fight increasingly more, more, well, vitriolic. I, th I think you're yeah. right. And I think that's, well, that's what had, what should be done is come to terms with exactly what you said. The problem is it's, it's incredibly hard to do. And I think that's why the systems are in place because it's a problem that cannot be solved because things are constantly changing. And so the solution changes. Oh, uh, sorry, phone call. Uh, so the right. solution changes with the times as well. Um, but I think the answer is not, a, is not an answer that people like. And the answer is that, hey, you have to contend and get along with people that disagree with you. Like whoa, that. Wait, that. Hold on for a, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's radical thinking yeah. there, buddy. I, listen, one time a guy said something I didn't like, yeah. and that's why he's a literal fascist who wants A literal dead. fascist. He is a literal fascist. Oh, God, I've heard that so much. Yeah, yeah but it's, yeah. it's the I think answer. you and I disagreed one time, and that's why I've been plotting your assassination in my Ah, uh, that's what this whole time. thing is about. That's why in Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out where you are so I can yeah. Roblox you. Man, I played Minecraft once. I drew a... I, no, I didn't draw. I built a giant mud figure with a dick. And <laughs> it took me like, it took me Big like nine daughter. hours. Yeah. But I think there's still a video of it somewhere or something like that. That's shit that I, I'm not good with. Like just the endless freedom of just do whatever you want in this game. I, I, I can't get on with it. But anyway, yeah, I think the answer is, hey, you know, you disagree. Well, step one, you figure out what you disagree about and you figure out the fundamentally irrevocable differences between you okay they yeah. they believe in god and everything like their crux is based in faith and you believe in well your moral taste is for example did you read the righteous mind mm -hmm. yeah, yeah your moral taste is is harm based so you just have that one sure. and you're like oh well do no harm to people or whatever you're never gonna or, or you've even constructed your own morals right i mean like mm. if you have sort of a looser spirituality like i would say i'm i'm somewhere between an atheist and a Buddhist, right? Where, like, mm. I don't really believe in any specific spiritual world, but I believe in, like, some level of metaphysics. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to, like, you end up crafting your own morality around, like, what you believe the practicality of things is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what you think the results are going to be. And that's how, like, a lot of people That's a conversation do it. we could have, too. Yeah. yeah that'd be it, cool. It, it, yeah, I'd love to talk about it. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd be super happy to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, but I think that that's true, right? Like you get your morality, you, you have these different moralities that are based on something that isn't finite and specific and guaranteed provable. Mm -hmm. And so then you have to both go, okay, so we disagree here. So then knowing that and knowing we cannot move on these subjects, mm -hmm. how do we solve our problems? Yes, that's exactly it. Look, we disagree. He, I, I'm just going to say exactly what you just said. We disagree on this. This is fundamental. We will never agree. So how yeah. do we move forward to, together and work together and still enjoy each other's company and still enjoy each other as people? Because that's what you want to do, even though that's the case. That's the question that has to be asked constantly for people. And that's, I think, what it was before. Well, it was more that before. And now it's just like, oh, well, look, if we disagree, you are everything that is bad in the world and you should be gone. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I 100% I, I 
Um, I 100% agree with that. I, I, I think that, um, and I think that's true in every conflict, mm -hmm. uh, because I've dealt with that. A lot of my conflict resolution is to like, if someone's like complaining about something, right. I, I want to get down to like the core of that problem. And then I think is that core problem changeable. So like, if their issue is like something that's like in, for example, let, let's keep it out of the workspace. We'll keep it interpersonal. Mm -hmm. If someone says to me, uh, that they have an issue with some aspect of my personality, Right. And I'll, I'll go, okay, well, is that something that's like changeable or is that something that's just like quintessential to me? I've put plenty of work into myself and I know I'm never going to be better. I'm never going to be perfect. Right. Hmm. Uh, then I'll say, listen, bud, I'm a flawed human. Sometimes I'm going to be annoyed at you and I'm going to be irritable. And if you don't like that, then maybe, you know, you're going to, I don't know what to tell you. You maybe we shouldn't be friends if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And then usually they're like, well, that's not what I'm saying. I'll go, okay, well then what's the solution? Cause I promise you I'll snap at you again. I promise. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I know I'm imperfect mm -hmm. and I know this will happen again. I will try not and, to, but it'll happen again. It, it, yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing I always tell people is I, I say like, like I, I usually say like, I could say I'll try not to because I'm already trying not to, but uh, that would be not the point. Right. right. The point is, I know I will make this mistake again. What do you want to do about it? Uh -huh. And usually when you present people with that fact, they're actually very quick to start actually reevaluating what's actually happening. And you right. can start talking about real problems because they're caught up on something that they think is like bigger or changeable. And it's like, listen, I'm sorry, I'm a flawed human, but I will continue to be a flawed human. How do we work around that problem? Right. You know, and and almost the dynamic of a disagreement argument will change at that point. Mm -hmm. That's a, and I think that's really important. Yeah, I think it's really cool too because it's not necessarily obvious. It's not mm -hmm. obvious that if you ask this question, then it, how they feel about the current situation will completely change. It, it, mm -hmm. It's just it's just like it's a, it's a weird trigger that happens. It's like a, that's again, it comes down to hey, we don't know how people fucking work. Um, yeah, no, that that that's a. I, I would I would like to write about stuff like that. But anyway, we've been going for a while. There's sure. probably a few things that we could talk about or should talk about with, with stuff that's gone and on in the last three months because we kind of just went off everywhere. We which kind of went off, yeah. Which, I, think, uh, I think, weirdly, we jumped a lot, but I feel like yeah. it was all pretty coherent and everything ended up circling back, which I feel like happens every time we talk. It does, yeah. I, I, I liked it. I think it was very good. But... Um, I'm just realizing how unnoise proof my area is. But yeah, but your microphone's doing a pretty good job. Good. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about or you wanted to go back and forth about on things that have happened recently? Um, I'm fairly detached. Like my memory is not good chronologically. You know this. Uh, but other people aren't like this. So I don't know. We could ask you or we could ask Chad. Is there anything that we want to talk about before we end? And we could, we could do that. Does that sound good? Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't have a specific thing. I could easily talk about anything. You know me. I yeah, can, you can. I you can form an opinion about anything. And you enjoy it too, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if we want to throw it to chat, I mean, guys, I've been reading chat. I just I've been focused on the conversation and only paying attention to specific little snippets that I think were super related. Mm -hmm. But if chat wants to uh, wants has questions or wants us to give us a topic or whatever, I'm open. I'm your show, baby. We in on my channel. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm very haphazard. Like, um, so I haven't been reading chat. I, if I read chat, I get distracted. For me, it's, it's, int I don't know. Uh, maybe I just never developed this skill properly, but translating my thoughts into words that make sense. Like you're very good at this. So you can you. take something and you can articulate it. And I'm like, yes, that's it. You've done that a few times this conversation. Me, it takes like a Okay, this this iteration. Okay, this iteration. Okay, finally, this is what I want to say. Um, I think it's just years of bl of blabbing my mouth. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've I think I do the same thing you do. I just do it really quickly in my head and mm -hmm. then say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I just, I just get it out. I word vomit, but That's that okay. that I like it. yeah, no, it served me it served me well. It's interesting, actually. You know, this is something that. So I wrote this last blog post, and I was thinking about this. I remember when I started streaming. Make dreams come true. Thank you, Jared. Hey, Rod. Um, I remember when I started streaming, I focused, because no matter what you do, you are getting better at whatever you're doing. So if you're avoiding uh, something, yeah. you're, you're getting better at avoiding something. If you are, I don't know, cooking, whatever, it could be anything. Same thing happens with thoughts and thought patterns. So I had, this is something I did to myself that wasn't good. Mm -hmm. Um. 
but the reasoning, like I say, doubt often wears a mask of wisdom, is that when I was first streaming, I would say things very concisely. Like, hey, this is what I want to say. Here it is. It's put well. Here you go. And then I'd move on to the next thing. Hey, this is what I want to say. The problem with that is that I could not last six hours doing that. Your dreams Thanks, CBD. Uh, um, and the meta of streaming at the time was you want to stream as much as you fucking can. You want to stream as much as possible. You want to be on all the time. And then there'd be Squilla, and Squilla's sitting there with the Souls Boys answering his favorite boss over and over and over again for hours. There was Kay Witty, who was, you know... Kay Witty, like, uh, he would... Kay Witty talks in a certain pattern where he says, ba 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 uh ba 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 uh ba 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 like and it's it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I sure. saw this and I was like, listen, I can't keep I can't I can't make what's in my head last six hours. I can't do it. Mm. So I began purposely and this is where I think I shot myself in the foot. This is not something I recommend you do. Um, I began purposely drawing things out. And adding mm, unnecessary, yeah, to fill air. And I think it's had a detrimental effect. It's something I, I don't like. It's something I don't want to do. Um, but that's, that's one of the things that has come with streaming for me. That's like, oh, that took away from me who I actually want to be as a person, you know? Because I see people that are super articulate, hyper articulate, and they can right. take something and be like, this is the response. That makes sense. That fits. It's like writing a good paragraph. This paragraph is written, the well, almost as good as it could be. Everything fits properly. Yeah. It's like throwing a good punch or a good kick. Your body works in tandem with itself and nothing is wasted. That's, that's, sure. that's how some people articulate. You're much better at that than I am. Um, Thank you. That's one thing I think I've I lost in streaming. How yeah. How great I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did we get a... Uh, any questions or anything? Uh, I think one person said something, but I, I, they mentioned at the end that uh, we have already talked about this. Um, I'll read it if you don't mind. Sure, go for um, it. It just feels like the world has turned extreme, less nuanced. So there used to be differences of opinion before without labeling the other person as essentially scum. Uh -huh. You would disagree about one topic and then move on. You guys have already talked about this, but yeah. And we did, right? We talked about the fact that like essentially people have lost lost nuance. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that that is, uh, I think that's true. I, I see this a lot. I was actually talking to someone about this the other day. Um, you know, words have meaning and we've reached a point where like everything is murder. Everything is rape. Everything is, mm -hmm. you know, theft. Everything is fascism. Yeah. You know, everyone's Hitler because I don't like them, you know? And, and it's, it's this idea that it's like, well, no, these things do have, you know, nuance. I mean, I see people who are in their forties dating someone in their twenties being called a pedophile. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's not correct. That's not how like, the word you, works. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you could, I, I don't know if I'd agree, but you could say that a 25 year old shouldn't be dating a 50 year old. But that's not what you're calling it. You're not saying, you're not talking about some big age gap. You're talking about something completely different that is way worse mm -hmm. and treating it as the same. Mm -hmm, exactly. And that's the lack of nuance. That's the lack of just complete, just destruction of meaning. I talked about you know? this a long time. Yeah, exactly. I talked about this a long time ago and how definitions are important and uh, making them more and more vague and applicable to whatever situation you want is actually far more insidious than people think. Like yeah. this happened with racism. Now, now yeah. somehow you can't be racist against white people and everything that you don't like when you are a person, I fucking hate that term, when you're colored, when, you, when you're non-white is racism or can be racism. It's like that does something to society. Like if you look at society as a whole, that poisons society. It's like a, it's like if a human were to eat uh, something that would cut up their insides. Like a, sure. you could have a, you could have like you know a mild poison, or you could have alcohol, or you could have a razor blade. It's gonna cut up your insides. It's gonna cause problems from within, and then society as a whole. Well, now they're damaged, and they have to fix those things. Except it's just gonna take forever because the time scale is so long. Um. But speaking on that, very uh, interesting. Yeah, like uh, I like to, I I really like the model of of you can model every. This helps people understand things. Is you can model everything in terms of your own body. Um, 
So, for example, um, well, it's an easy one is is uh, is society. You can treat society as if it were a human body. You have certain things within society that are meant as immune cells. So they, they ward off illness. They ward off pathogens. You have certain things in society that are meant to nourish the body. So you have, um, let's say, food production or things like that. And then you have certain parts of society, politics, that govern your relationship with other bodies and also govern your relationship with bodies in, inside yourself. Okay, well, look, you got a, you got a, you got a bummed kidney. What are your other organs going to do to make up for that? Can they fix that? You know, like, and then if you treat it that way, and this is something in a book, I, I thought of this first, by the way, but um, um, you have thoughts and behavioral parasites. So a behavioral sure. parasite is something like, um, uh, what's an easy one? Uh, like that, that one, um, well, they have the right to do it or they can do it, you know? Oh, they can do yeah, it. And they there, can. there's no should or shouldn't. There's no right or wrong. It's just, yeah, they can. And that trumps everything. That is a, yeah. that is a parasite that, that infects things. And then all of a sudden you have people doing things that they can, that are clearly not good, but no one's going to call them on it because they have the right to do it. I think about this one all the time when we talk about certain aspects of like capitalism, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're at a point in society now where you essentially have two loud voices. The, the, the capitalism can do no wrong to criticize it is communism and you hate America. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, I think the only option is to create one giant commune. Mm -hmm. And it's like, are you both stupid? Yeah, is there no nuance to individual issues? Right. Like, like people will say, well, a, can, uh, a company can do this thing because they are a free company. Yes, they can. Mm -hmm. But should we should ask our, ourselves as a society, not on an individual scale, but as a society, is it healthy that they can do that? Exactly. Should it remain that way? Should there be exceptions for certain kinds of companies? Mm -hmm. Do certain kinds of companies have an influence on our society that others do not? I would argue that a quality management firm has a lot less effect on the communications of individuals mm -hmm. than, say, Twitter. Mm -hmm. So we have to ask ourselves, do we need to regulate these different industries differently? Which, whoa, we've been doing for forever. But mm -hmm. now all of a sudden the word regulation is bad. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. innately bad. We need to get rid of all regulation, says the man who probably damaged society a few times, you know. And, and then, uh, oh, just... oh, uh, uh, who is uh, Pharma Bro? I have no idea who Pharma Bro is. Uh, the guy, he went to prison for, you know, he's the guy who like bought... Um, like that AIDS medication, then jacked up the price. Oh no way! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then he, and then he went. He later went to uh, went to prison, not because of that, but for um, fraud. For something else, he, not because he. Yeah. He's, he... Uh, well, well, it was still in the same job. But oh, okay. He basically just like hid losses and fucked up a bunch of people. Yeah. So he got. Um, he finally got. Shkreli, Matthew Shkreli. Thank you, Orson. Oh yeah, never heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... He, um, he, he said that, you know, regulation bad, we should just get rid of regulation. Yeah, see, that's something that, uh, that I get. I think this is obvious, but there's been a lot of, like, I'm not saying medicine is, is bad, because I think medicine is very good. I think medicine right. has its place. But I also think yeah. that if there's an industry that has a, a massive history of corruption, and it's widely known, it's the pharmaceutical industry. It, and there have been individuals within the pharmaceutical industry and and bodies of people that have done horrific things if you look at it on a moral level and then people seem to forget these things so whenever i deal with pharmaceuticals i or, or drugs or anything like that i try and take it at, at a grain of uh, with a grain of salt like okay look this is what i've been prescribed what does it do? What is it for? And is there a way to do this naturally? If not, I'll take the drug. Fine. Crazy. Wait, Crazy. Wait, wait, wait. Educate yourself and make decisions that yeah. seem best for your well-being and health. Faraz, you've been pretty radical yeah, tonight. Uh, I, listen, uh, the, guy, the assassin's on the way, buddy. Like, 
Well, my last moments have been great talking to you. Uh, in Minecraft. In Minecraft. Sorry. Okay, I'm still going to lie. Well, I, you know, Minecraft is my life. So yeah, 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 if I lose course. my Minecraft life, I have no choice but to commit suicide in real life. Uh, sorry. Hey, you're not supposed to say it. You commit Roblox. You commit okay. Roblox. Is that what it's called now? Yeah, you, you Roblox yourself. Actually, you know what I saw? I saw uh, I commit unlife. I saw someone I say love that one. unlife. I've never heard that before. I was like, what? Like, why not just call it, call it suicide? You know what's interesting? So I've worked um, a fair bit a couple of years ago. I haven't recently. I worked pretty close with uh, some people who are developing um, pharmaceutical standards yep. for uh, specifically labs that develop medicine. Um, and, you know, you meet a lot of people in these industries. And I think it's it's difficult because what you've essentially got going on is a group of people who legitimately want to solve problems, mm -hmm. who are funded by people who are just doing business. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a lot of the a lot of the the regulatory stuff is actually all around like so what they were doing was they were developing a standard the goal was to take a look at the way standards in laboratory development work mm -hmm. and get out of the lab testing cycle faster by eliminating the fat keeping all of the things that are important and getting rid of stuff that was like it's like well this doesn't actually do anything like we're just wasting time on this right, right? yeah um and and the and 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 it was a really good standard and the people people involved were hugely passionate about just creating solutions and getting uh, medicines out there faster and their biggest example was a medicine that when it came out ended up i don't remember what the medicine was exactly because i wasn't actually part of that i just remember hearing about this from the guy who is now retired who was working on the project um the the medicine ended up just solving a problem yeah. right but it was also their first trial to prove to the fda like hey this is a really good standard um, that all labs should adopt and should be considered like an official, you know, standard for regulatory services. Right. And um, a lot of these people, they're really just passionate about like, like, hey, we got this technology. We want to get things out there to help people as fast as possible to save lives. Mm -hmm. And if you're actually embedded in this world, you'd find out that we've got cures for things that no one even realized. We've cured or fixed or solved an issue for so many things. And sometimes... It's just not out there because it's being held back by by stuff that sucks, mm -hmm. like the FDA being underfunded, mm. right? Or poor standards that just haven't been optimized. Mm. And all of that is ignored because we end up getting these companies that want to just get you to buy like opioids because mm -hmm. it makes money. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you got like Purdue Pharma or whatever, like, you know, pushing like, you know, get oxycodone. Yeah. Do oxy, baby. It's so good for you. Ask your doctor about oxy. Yeah. Like, it really you know is that a I mean? thing now? Uh, that was a thing. That yeah, was they a got, thing. Okay. Uh, no, they, they got heavily sued for that uh, oh. because they created the opioid crisis. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And so I'm, yeah. I'm assuming they didn't, they still made more money than they lost. That's... Uh, we hard to say hard to I don't, say i don't ex i don't actually know the finances yeah. you know um i know it was billions upon billions of dollars the government maybe took not from them. yeah maybe so, not yeah um, well but it yeah Go i've ahead. seen this i've seen this in the financial sector sector as well because well, i got really into trading for a while i tried to learn everything about it how it works okay big money uh dumb money smart money all of that how things how things flow um and what i saw was was it wasn't necessarily illegal or it wasn't necessarily a punishment. It was a cost of doing business, the fines that they would they, they would incur. They'd make seven billion dollars, they'd get get fined ten million. You know, and it's like, oh hey, like that doesn't Oh and, oh God, this leads into something about society that I think Incentives oh, Yeah, I unplug. But yeah. incentive structures. It's like yeah. people oh, need Oh my god. You want to go ahead. Yeah. No, you've said something that is so true about society right now. Fines are poor people taxes. Yes. They are, they they don't enforce the law. They just enforce the law on people who can't afford it. Yes. Because exactly. Rich people take their supercar and speed and then pay the fine. Mm-hmm. It's because just like, oh, that's, can. that's, that is the cost of doing this. It's not that this is going to be a big deal to me. It's like a, it's like a going through a toll bridge or something like that. And so, that's, that's, I've had people literally say that people who own supercars, like in an interview saying, yeah, it's just, it's just, I just know I'm going to get ticketed, but I want to go 150. So I'm mm. going to go 150. Yeah. As long as I don't lose my license, everything's good. Same thing with yep. business. If I want to do something and it's like, okay, well, look, it's going to break this law. It's going to break this regulation. It's going to do this. Can I afford that? Yes, I'm going to do it. That's that's yeah. it. 
And meanwhile, other people are like, oh, they can't break that law. That law is there. They can't do this because that law will break. It's like, no, that's not how that works. You have to look at it. You have to look at each and every single one as, is it affordable or is it not? Like for me, is it affordable to go to prison? Absolutely not. I'm not going to do it. Right? Right. For another person, is it affordable to make a, to have a $10, $10 million fine? Yeah, no problem. They made $7 billion. Easy. Like nothing. Easy. I'll just pay it. Yeah. yeah. That's not a uh, incentive structure that is very well put or very well thought out. And then it also comes down to, well, I guess this ties into the idea of the, the society as a body. And uh, people don't realize that large groups of people, even, even sm small groups of people, even, even one person, are very much run unconsciously by incentive structures. Mm -hmm. So, and there's all sorts, there's social incentive structures, there's financial incentive structures, there's health incentive structures. So like, if I'm talking to you and I know you're not going to like what I have to say, I'm hesitant in saying it. That's an incentive structure, right? And so now when you plug yourself into a massive, ever all seeing, always judging incentive structure, bad things happen. Bad things happen on the individual level and bad things happen on the societal level. And I think that's that's what we've been talking about for a while now. I think that's true. And it's actually interesting because I was thinking about this. So someone, um, uh, CBD actually uh, said earlier, asked us, uh, or not CBD, sorry, it was um, Ozzy, I believe. Hold on, let me go up. Uh, someone asked a question, but we were already on a subject. No, hmm. um, let's see. It was um, Ozzy said, uh, was talking about abortion, Roe v. Wade, right? Hmm. Um, and, and not to like go super deep into that unless you want to, um, I was thinking okay, about, yeah. th this was a subject that I was thinking a lot about like incentive structures. Mm -hmm. I think one of the problems we have as a society is we're really focused on banning things or allowing things and not on saying, what do we want mm -hmm. and how do we incentivize that? How do we create the results we're looking for? Right. Um, I hear a lot about things like from a practical level, right? Ignoring like the moral stuff. We can go into that if you want to, but from like a practical level, I've heard people say stuff like falling birth rates and, and, and the, the death of the nuclear family and all this kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I go, okay, well, what are we doing to incentivize that? Mm -hmm. What encourages me, let's just say me, as a young person, to want to try to achieve what my parents or my parents' parents achieved? Well, you know? I, I think that's what the religious ethic did. The Judeo-Christian... My parents are not religious. No, 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 but over over time. So I think that it's one of those system of damages, again. It's like, do you want a Judeo-Christian-based uh, society, or do you want, like, let's say, a, a technocracy or, or, or a more... Uh, new atheist style of of uh, society, and they both have problems with them. But one of yeah. the things that the Judeo Christian one did well was it did encourage nuclear families, and it did sure. also encourage uh, you know having children, whether that's good or not. One problem it did solve was the declining birth rate and the sustainable level that uh, a country's workforce workforce needs. Right. So that's something where you go like, okay, so is that is that what that solution is that the the only solution and mm -hmm. is it the best one could we achieve those results through anything else mm -hmm. um like ozzy when i you know i was just coming up with like a super easy example right because like i don't think i'm a good uh point of measurement for anyone who's normal <laughs> okay fair <laughs> enough like yeah. normal decisions right yeah, yeah. But like so he said he said like well you save on taxes eh, i don't know if i care enough about a few bucks saved on taxes what are we to... w in, with what Creating a nuclear family, okay, right? okay. Uh, getting married, yeah. 2.5 kids, right? Um, I don't know if I care about that because I talk about this a lot, right? Like what w I think about this sometimes when I talk to people about like jobs, they go like, you could switch jobs and receive more money. I don't really need more money. But if yeah. I switch jobs, I do lose a lot of the things I already have. Right. Tenure, you know, respect, freedom. You mm -hmm. know, my job provides me things from having just been there long enough right. that I just kind of get left alone. Yeah. You know, do I want to exchange that for some extra money. Oh, if I don't really need it, not so much. Right. You know? Right. So then, so when you talk about incentives, you have to talk about like, what are things that are on average going to get most people encouraged to follow some pattern that you want? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we do very poorly because we always do one, one problem, one minor solution mm -hmm. rather than, uh, usually it's more complex, right? Um, if, if, cause like, for example, even if I Again, trying to use myself, I'm a bad example. 
uh, if I did want to have children, uh, it'd be really hard for me to just do that mm -hmm. with just anything. Like it, where I currently live is in a financial hellscape. Like it's mm -hmm. you, you, you cannot afford on two salaries to still have a house that could accommodate children. Right. You know, and, and unless you're very lucky with a li very limited, uh, very highly paid job pool. Right. Um, that's hard to get into even if you're overqualified. Right. So what's the incentive? Why would I do that? You know, um, but I do still want to have relationships and have a fulfilling interaction with a partner and be together and 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 not run a risk of of of, you know, screwing myself in that process. How do I live a life here? with those things. Those are problems that our society faces and we need to solve all those problems if we want to solve just one problem. And each one is connected. Mm. Low jobs, low wages, um, lack of housing, overpriced housing, um, affordability of products and services that lead us to not be able to do the things like just buy a house. Why is no one buying houses? I can't afford them. Yeah. You know, why is no one getting married? It's not beneficial to me in this environment. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you having kids? Because I can't afford the child. It will not have a good life. Mm -hmm. I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. You know, these are all things that are a problem, but we always focus on like these one hyper thing, explode it into this big issue and ignore everything else that might be incentivizing us away from the pattern of behavior that we're looking for. Yeah. No. And that's how I think a lot. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I, I would fucking, I would, I would go and say, well, the next step for me is the conspiracy theorist in me. And it would be like, okay, well, why? Like, why? Mm -hmm. Like it's, you know, people aren't, there are dumb people, but there are also very smart people. There are people sure. that have no control, and there are people that have tons of control. And there have been there are people that have been running things for a long time, and people that you know drift on by and stuff like that. So, is it possible that this is there is intentional components about these things? Um, I, I I wouldn't doubt that. And then the question would be why. But I think uh, I think we can save that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we can always save that for another for another another chat. Yeah, um, we've gone I for about wasn't... two hours. Yeah, that's sure. two hours and nineteen minutes. No, that was great. I, I enjoyed that. That was that was wonderful. I, I was happy to that talk was to a you great again. Conversation. Yeah, man, I absolutely loved this. Um, and I actually, I really, I just want to say, I really like your chat. I've been reading it, and I, chat, they huh? were they're making me smile. They were making you know, I really, I really liked them. It was absolute. Thank you so much for having me here, bud. Of course, it's um, been great talking to you. If 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 I wanted to talk to anybody, it, it, you would be very high on the list, and it's because of how I you. That. Well, it's because of who you are, basically. Um, but yeah, chat's you know, good too. They are well. You know what? I think um, my favorite thing about streaming is interacting with people and seeing what they have to say and seeing. Um, you know, and interacting with them and interacting with people. I, I think that's the most fulfilling part of anything I do, right? Even when I'm playing games like League or whatever, I mean, I could play that without being streaming, but I, I want to like engage with people on the side. And when you have a really nice collective of people who are are very clearly um, thinking about what they say and even sometimes disagreeing, but all just kind of like being lighthearted about it. Mm. It's a really healthy environment. And I really, really like that. I'm lucky. Yeah. You know, I got, I got lucky with a lot of lucky. these things. Yeah. Yeah. You, you are, you really are. So, you know, I, I want to thank chat for, for listening to me ramble. I want to thank you for giving me the time to ramble mm -hmm. um, and to talk to you and for expressing your thoughts with me. This was it was great. I was I was really looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah. we'll do it again. Um, so <laughs> definitely, definitely. Socials. Where do where do like the, the the where do people find you? Yeah, guys, you can check me out on Twitch and the Great Skeleton Man, um, which is you know the name's a meme, but you can check me out there. I have a YouTube channel called uh, Kevin Not Guaranteed. It's mostly just video game shit, never anything serious. Um, but uh, I play League of Legends and I do stuff like this. Um, I've had Faraz on the channel before, um, and and now I'm I'm here on on his uh i hope you guys will come by i'm always up for a conversation even when i'm um uh playing like league of legends or whatever i love to ta talk while i do it or if i'm playing anything really uh sometimes i play other things but um mm -hmm. lately i've just been playing league because between you and me i uh, i just run out of games that i want to play so mm -hmm. i just want to i just want to play league uh, you know um i've had that with also, dead by daylight recently sorry to interrupt yeah no 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 you're fine you're yeah. fine uh yeah emerald loves dead by daylight she's yeah. uh she plays it constantly. If you're ever hanging out with me in Discord when I'm not live, you'll just hear her yelling in the background. Yeah, yeah, okay. Lee, or not leaks, or Dead by Daylight. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
And then also you guys can find me on Twitter, uh, GR8 Skeleton Man. Um, I, I, you, you may, I don't know, I, I don't think you and I have interacted on Twitter. I was going to say, you could probably find me on Faraz Timeline somewhere, but somewhere, I don't think we've interacted on Twitter there. in a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's where you guys can find me. So feel free to come by if you want to. Um, I hope to we can do this again soon, either here or, or on my channel or both. Either one's good for me. Um, I would like to do it again. Uh, a lot of my content will just be doing stuff I want to do now. So i um, very happy to do that's it. That's exactly, if, if you don't mind me taking a moment, that's yeah. exactly, I think, something that I've started doing too. And I think mm -hmm. it's interesting hearing that from you. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, yeah. Because I've been talking about this with a few people and I've said, you know, there was sort of like a strategy for a while everyone was following. And I think at this point, that's not really working, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I've been sitting at the same spot as a streamer for a long time. And I realized one of my biggest issues was I, 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 I change what I do a lot and people will have like one expectation of me yeah. and then, then they'll have another expectation of me, yeah. but I'm not satisfied, uh, with the way it was. So now I'm yeah. like, listen, I'm going to play League of Legends. Sometimes I'll play something else. And, I, and as often as I can, I'm going to have a guest on to talk about things that matter. Yeah. And that's just what I'm going to do. And I hope you like it. And yeah. if not, well, at least me and my one viewer will. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and my, my phone. Yeah. No, me and my phone will, you know. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I wrote about, actually. I wrote about that whole thing, that process of uh, the recent blog post was I felt so tied to what I'm supposed to do to, okay, look, I'm supposed to play this game over and over and over and over and over again. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going cold turkey. I'm going to break all of it. Now, Twitch, if it works out, I'll stream. If not, it 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 doesn't. You know what I mean? Um, sure, yeah. But that's something we can talk about next time as well. Sure. Um, I was just about to sit reply to, uh, uh, to DD, and then it wouldn't let me... Uh said so just link it in chat and my for some reason my twitch is messing up and not letting me send a message no you just send it to me um, in discord i can post it you, got, got, you can find links to everything on my on my twitch page um but you know i feel i feel the same way for us i think that uh it's it's you know you just got to do what you want to do right and hope it hope it works out that's what life um, is i think that is so that is what life is definitely all right man i know you're you you burn out after a while thanks for yeah. having me and thanks guys, for being here thank you I will catch you all later and catch you on the next episode. I'll send you right? a message later too, and we can yeah, figure yeah, yeah. out another time. Definitely. I'm, my calendar's open, so let's fill it up. Great. Thank you. Right. See you later. Great, Scott, man. Bye-bye. Bye, bud.